The opinions and views expressed in the following program are those of the speakers and the host and do not necessarily reflect those of Yokely Scott Corporation and your sports network. Yeah, I've been closer to Jesus before, so can you help me out? Can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Am I on my own? Am I on my own? Or can you help me out? Can you help me out? Welcome into a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your wallet, you owe it to your credit score if you're taking out a loan. And well, how many of us don't take out a loan when you're buying a car? <laughs> I'd like to have your money if you're if you're one of those people, but I digress. Uh, If you are planning on getting a brand new or slightly used automobile, before you make that final decision, before you make the commitment, and it is a large commitment, kids, you owe it to yourself to go over to Greenwood Chevrolet. Let Greg Greenwood and the folks over at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Give them a chance to earn your business. They got a great sales department, a great finance department, and a really, really great uh, service department. Add it all up, and it means you got a nice dealership. Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. All right, it is opening round of the OHSAA high school basketball tournament uh, for the boys. Uh, The girls will begin district play today, and there is just one team left in Division I. uh, That would be Canfield. Uh, They will play in the district semifinals tonight at 7 o'clock up at Stowe, which is just outside of Akron. Stowe Monroe Falls High School is the place Canfield will visit Stowe Monroe Falls. I believe they are the three seed, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Canfield is uh, the lower seed and uh, or the higher seed, if you will, and they will be uh, traveling to Stowe. Uh, so that is the one girls basketball game district semifinals. Uh, the district semifinals for girls in D2, D3, and D4 will be tomorrow night. Tonight, it is district. It is a sectional opening round tournament tonight uh, for boys in D2, D3, and D4. Tomorrow night, D1 gets into the action. So here's your uh, schedule for tonight. All of these games begin at 7 o'clock. In Division Two, Niles is at Struthers. East will visit Streetsboro. Ravenna is at Canfield. Howland at Lakeview. Gerard at Salem. Hubbard at West Branch. West Giaga will travel to Cheney. Division Three first round sectional tournaments. Middlefield Cardinal will visit Camel. Rootstown is at Champion. Conneaut at South Range. Columbiana takes a trip to Mineral Ridge. United will play Crestview. Jefferson is at Grand Valley. And East Palestine will visit Newton Falls. All of those games starting at 7 o'clock tonight. And finally, Division Four sectional first-round games. Matthews will travel to Southern. Badger is at Wellsville. Chalker at St. Thomas Aquinas. Lordstown is at Brookfield. Bloomfield at McDonald. Maplewood at Valley Christian. Letonia will travel to Lake Center Christian. And Western Reserve is at Jackson Milton. All of those games will start at 7 o'clock tonight. Division 2, Division 3, Division 4. Sectional first round games tonight. Boys basketball 
Uh, tournaments are here, and uh, we're going to be mucho, mucho busy, <laughs> very busy uh, tonight and all through the week. Uh, again, a reminder, uh, tonight, Division One district semifinal action. Canfield is at Stowman Row Falls High School. That game will start at 7 o'clock. Tomorrow night, Division One sectional first round action. Fitch will be at Ashtabula Lakeside. And then you have girls district play in Divisions 2, 3, and 4. Tomorrow night, Kenston will visit Salem. West Geauga is at Poland. West Branch is at Marlington. All of those games will start at 7 o'clock. Division 3, East Palestine is at South Range. Crestview at Brookfield. Rootstown at Garrettsville. Garfield, Ursland at Champion. Division 4, Springfield at McDonald, Bristol at Newton Falls, Maplewood will travel to Western Reserve, and Jackson Milton is at East Canton. All of those games beginning at 7 o'clock. Uh, so tonight and tomorrow night, uh, we will have boys sectional first round uh, uh, games tonight and tomorrow night. And for the girls, district semifinal action tonight. And tomorrow night. All right, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. Congratulations to the Boardman Boys and Girls Bowling Teams. They have both qualified for the Division I State Tournament. They were district runner-ups in their uh, respective uh, matches uh, at Stonehenge Lanes in Akron. The Boardman boys finished second to mentor as Boardman uh, will be one of six teams headed to state. Mentor, Boardman, Louisville, Parma, Padua, Nordonia and Maslin Perry. So Boardman and Louisville in our YSN family, congratulations to those two teams. You're headed to the states in bowling. Uh, girls Bowling Division I District. This was held at uh, Freeway Lanes up in Warren. Uh, the Boardman girls finished in second. And again, the top uh, five go to state. Menor, Boardman, Green, Maslin Perry, and Canton McKinley all going to the state tournament as, uh, again, the Boardman boys and girls will be uh, bowling on March the 5th. The girls will be bowling at Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl in our state capital of Columbus, Ohio. The day after, March the 6th, the boys will be bowling at the exact same place, Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl in Columbus. So congratulations to the Boardman boys and girls for a job well done. By the way, the Harding girls finished in eighth place. Unfortunately, only the top five uh, go to the state tournament. But congratulations to the Boardman boys and girls. Congratulations to the Louisville boys. Uh, YSN family members going to the state bowling tournament. Uh, The girls will uh, get it started March the 5th. The boys will start on March the 6th in Columbus. News out of Youngstown State University. Uh, the YSU um, women's basketball team. Uh, the Horizon League made their uh, choices for all Horizon League. Congratulations to Neka Obeiser. Not only was she named Freshman of the Year. That should come as no surprise. Neka Obeiser won Freshman of the Week four times during the course of the Horizon League season. Uh, Neka Obeiser, all Horizon League third team. Joining her on the third team, Chelsea Olson. And congratulations to Mary Dunn. Uh, Mary Dunn is on the second team, all Horizon League. Uh, so congratulations to Neka Obeiser, freshman of the year. She and Chelsea Olson are on the All Horizon League third team. Mary Dunn on the All Horizon League second team. Uh, congratulations uh, to those uh, to those women. Outstanding, outstanding job. Uh, still have not figured out uh, where we are with the uh, with the guys uh, quite yet. They have not made. 
uh, that um, announcement quite yet. Uh, when we get it, uh, we will certainly uh, pass it on to you folks. Uh, but right now, the Horizon League, uh, they made the announcement uh, for the women's uh, All-Horizon League team. None of the Penguins got first team. Mary Dunn got second team. Chelsea Olsen, Neka Obeiser getting third team. Neka Obeiser winning the Freshman of the Year Award. Coming up on Thursday, in a couple of days, the YSU men and women will both be playing a home game in the opening round of the Horizon League Tournament. Now, the Horizon League Tournament is going to be 12, 12 teams uh, in, in the uh, men's tournament. It will just be 11 teams in the women's tournament. Uh, Detroit Mercy bowed out uh, of playing basketball about halfway through the season with uh, some, some problems uh, within, their, um, within their basketball team and within their basketball program. Uh, we won't expand on that. Uh, the Penguins will be home. The Penguins drew the sixth seed in the men's tournament. Uh, they will be home to UIC. UIC and Youngstown State played two games earlier this year at Beagley. Youngstown State lost to UIC on a buzzer beater the first time they played uh, UIC. And then the second game, Youngstown State was able to win pretty comfortably. Uh, so the Penguins, uh, by the way, both of those games played without Darius Quisenberry. So the Penguins will open up against Illinois-Chicago, UIC. That's going to start at 8 o'clock. That'll be an 8 o'clock start, Youngstown State home to UIC. Now, the winner of that game, well, they could go to a variety of places. Uh, the highest remaining seed is going to go to Northern Kentucky. Uh, Northern Kentucky is the four seed. So the highest seed remaining of the four opening round games, which, by the way, Robert Morris, the 12 seed, will be at Detroit Mercy. Detroit Mercy is the five seed. Uh, the 11 seed is UIC. They'll be at YSU, the six seed. The seven seed is Green Bay. Uh, Green Bay will be hosting number 10, Purdue Fort Wayne, and number eight, Milwaukee will be hosting number nine, IUPUI. So let's assume for a second, and I don't think this is going to be the case. I think you'll probably see an upset. But let's assume all the home teams win. If all the home teams win, uh, then you will be looking at the following. Milwaukee would go to Cleveland State, and they would play uh, the conference quarterfinals against Cleveland State. Uh, Green Bay would go to Wright State. Wright State is the two seed. Green Bay is the seven seed. Uh, Oakland is the three seed. YSU is the six seed. So Oakland would host Youngstown State. And then uh, Detroit Mercy would go to Northern Kentucky. That's assuming that it's all chalk. That's assuming it's all chalk. Now, if there's one upset, then the lowest remaining seed uh, would go to Cleveland State. It would no longer be uh, the eight seed, or, or let's assume that the eight seed loses to IUPUI. Uh, it, you know, if, if nobody else on the road gets a, a victory, then IUPUI uh, would be playing Cleveland State. For Youngstown State, uh, you got to figure that. Youngstown State is probably going to be either in Oakland or Northern Kentucky. I kind of doubt that Youngstown State is going to be uh, headed to Wright State. And I, I seriously doubt uh, Youngstown State heads to uh, Cleveland State. As a matter of fact, there's there, there's no possible way uh, that Youngstown State would go to Cleveland State. Uh, it it just that's out of the realm of possibility. Uh, it, it would not happen. Uh, and and let's say that uh, Robert Morris were to upset Detroit. Let's say all the road teams were to upset uh, the home game home teams, with the exception of Youngstown State. YSU would be the sixth seed. 
they would wind up going to northern Kentucky in that case uh, because they would be the highest remaining seed. Uh, they would go to northern Kentucky. My guess is Youngstown State is either going to be going to Oakland or northern Kentucky. Uh, I, I just don't see how Youngstown State would be going to Wright State. Uh, just I, I don't see that happening. Um, I, I, again, uh, Youngstown State is the sixth seed. It's the second second lowest seed. Uh, or I'm sorry, the second yeah yeah it would be the second uh, second highest seed. I'm sorry, the second highest seed uh, that is that is in this that is in this. Uh, so I, I don't see how. Uh, how uh, Youngstown State would be going to Cleveland State or Wright State. I think there's a much, much better chance of Youngstown State, assuming they can beat UIC, uh, that they would probably wind up going to Oakland, maybe, maybe Northern Kentucky. It just it, it depends. Uh, the women are seated number seven, and the women will play a 5 o'clock game against the Mastodons, from Purdue Fort Wayne. Youngstown State beat the Mastodons earlier this year at Beagley, and they didn't have much problem beating the Mastodons. Uh, truth be told, Purdue Fort Wayne is 1-21 and on the campaign. They're 1-21. and uh, I don't know how they got the, the 10 seed, and I don't know how uh, UIC got the 11 seed, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, UIC has the 11 seed. They will play at Cleveland State, the sixth seed. Uh, Youngstown State is the seven. They will play the ten, and that would be Purdue-Fort Wayne, the Mastodons. That game will be played at Beagley on Thursday afternoon at 5 o'clock, and then the men will play on Thursday night at 8 o'clock. Uh, Robert Morris uh, got the nine seed. Actually, yeah, Robert Morris got the nine seed. Uh, they are on the road playing Northern Kentucky. Northern Kentucky will be at Robert Morris. Robert Morris uh, has the nine seed. Uh, so th there you go. Lowest remaining seed will uh, go to Wright State. The highest remaining seed will go to Green Bay. Uh, the four and the five will be playing each other in the quarterfinals. IUPUI got the five seed. They will be traveling to Oakland. Oakland is the four seed. Uh, those two teams got a bye in the first round. So uh, the five and the four will be playing each other in the quarterfinals. Uh, Oakland getting the four seed. They have the home game. Uh, the highest remaining seed will go to number three, Green Bay. The lowest remaining seed will uh, will take a trip to Wright State. Uh, Wright State is the top seed. And the second lowest remaining seed will go to Milwaukee. Now, Youngstown State's in an interesting situation here because there are three games played. Youngstown State right now is the second highest seed uh, in within the six teams that are playing. Cleveland State is the highest seed. Uh, if Cleveland State were to beat UIC, then Cleveland State would be traveling to Green Bay. Uh, they would go to Green Bay. If they can beat UIC, that's a guarantee uh, that Cleveland State will be traveling to Green Bay. If Youngstown State can beat Purdue Fort Wayne and Cleveland State knocks off UIC, by the way, both of those things will in all likelihood happen, barring a tremendous upset. Uh, Cleveland State and Youngstown State should both win their games rather easily, I might add. Uh, Youngstown State would be looking at a game at Milwaukee on March the 2nd. Uh, they would be going at Milwaukee on March the 2nd. Uh, that game would start at 8 o'clock. So there's a pretty good chance uh, Youngstown State winds up playing Milwaukee should they get past uh, the Mastodons from Purdue-Fort Wayne in the first round of the women's tournament.
Uh, so we can talk a little bit about that if you wish. 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline, open for business. All right, so we got high school basketball, plenty of games. Uh, oh, good Lord, plenty of games on the network. Uh, all kinds of stuff going on there. Uh, we have uh, YSU women's basketball. Again, congratulations, NECA Obeiser, freshman of the year. Uh, also to uh, Chelsea Olson and Mary Dunn, as well as NECA Obeiser. Olson and Obeiser were named All Horizon League third team. Uh, Mary Dunn, All Horizon League second team. And uh, hopefully the men will be making their announcement uh, very, very shortly as to um, uh, as to uh, who has uh, who has been uh, put on uh, which team. All right, so we'll take a time out and be back to uh, open up the phone lines and uh, talk with you, the fans. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline. Open for business, 330-886-0813. We're back in a bit. Stick around, more to come. New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high-quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring and well you'll find them all at bairdbrothers.com ordered easily delivered conveniently enjoyed comfortably bairdbrothers.com wrs wealth advisors the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists located on south avenue in boardman hi this is jim myers with myers family insurance your local medicare and retirement resource we're excited to have sports back whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K-Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. The uh, basketball selections for the men uh, in the Horizon League have been announced. And I... I Honest to God, I don't know why the Horizon League doesn't respect Nas Bohannon's talents. Uh, he was named All Horizon League second team uh, this year, and okay, second team, wonderful. Uh, you're not going to convince me that he is not one of the five best players in the Horizon League. It just, ah, uh, Lord. Uh, unbelievable. Hopefully he um, he uses this as a little bit of motivation come tournament time on Thursday because this is BS. Uh, Nas Bohannon, an All-Horizon League second team selection. Uh, Garrett Covington was named to the All-Defensive team, and Shamar Rattan Mays uh, is on the All-Freshman team. So congratulations to uh, Nas Bohannon, Garrett Covington, and Shamar Rattan Mays. 
Uh, Nas Bohannon, All Horizon League second team selection. Garrett Covington, All Defensive Team, and Shamar Rattan Mays on the All Freshman Team. So congratulations uh, to those three gentlemen as uh, the men's um, uh, Horizon League first, second, and third team. Uh, were announced uh, moments ago. So congratulations again to Nas Bohannon, All-Horizon League second team. Garrett Covington made the All-Horizon League defensive team. And Shamar Rattan Mays made the All-Horizon freshman team. 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. If you want to pick up on the conversation from yesterday, the Biggest upset in the history of sports. We made this, uh, uh, kind of made this uh, public yesterday because yesterday was the 41st anniversary of what I consider to be the biggest upset in the history of sports. And frankly, it's not even close. Uh, and that would be the uh, United States hockey team, the 1980 United States hockey team, upsetting arguably the greatest hockey team ever assembled, uh, in the Soviet Union hockey team. Uh, the United States beat the Soviet Union at Lake Placid, uh, and that was on a Friday night. And uh, they uh, went to uh, the gold medal game uh, against Finland uh, two days later and uh, defeated Finland, came from behind to beat them and win the gold medal in the 1980 Winter Olympics uh, in Lake Placid, New York, up in upstate New York. Uh, I consider that to be the biggest upset in the history of sports. Love, would love to hear your uh, uh, your opinion on that. I got a few interesting um, calls yesterday about that. Uh, the Indians and the Pirates uh, both worked out as a complete team for the first time. Lots of interesting things uh, coming out of Bradenton. Lots of interesting things coming out of Goodyear as well. Uh, there's a lot of folks that believe that uh, the Indians are going to be a, uh, you know, a rebuilding team and a team that is not going to be uh, on the on the radar when it comes to uh, contenders in the American League Central Division. I, I would not go that direction. I, I'm going to tell you right now. Um, I'm not going to say the Indians are going to win the Central because I think it would be crazy to say that. Uh, I do think that Minnesota and Chicago are, are going to be pretty pretty good teams. But I'll put Cleveland up there. And I will say that because I think Cleveland still has a really good pitching staff. And the pitching staff will put them in an awful lot of games. Now, a lot of this is going to determine – uh, you know, where the Indians are, the offense is going to determine that. I mean, if if you can get some production uh, outside of Ramirez, uh, some friend Mil Reyes, Oscar Mercado, uh, the Rosario kids, uh, you get some production, all of a sudden, okay, now we're looking at a pretty interesting team. Don't be a bit surprised if the Indians win at least 85 games this year. Don't be a bit surprised by that. Uh, it's the pitching is just too good. It is. It's too good of a it's too good of a pitching rotation and too good of a pitching staff for this team to bottom out. And while I think that you know it's going to be interesting to see where the Indians go payroll wise. Right now, they're second lowest in Major League Baseball, only behind, uh, well, only ahead of the Pirates, I should say. Pirates are going to be by far and away the lowest payroll. Um, and the announcement was made yesterday by Governor DeWine uh, that you're looking at about 30% of capacity for Major League Baseball in Ohio. So essentially, give or take a few seats, 10,500 will be the maximum number of people allowed in Cleveland to partake an Indians game. Now, I'm not going to pick the low-hanging fruit and say, well, you know, <laughs> the fans don't even show up in, in those numbers, so you know, it's not going to matter. No, I'm not going to pick that low-hanging fruit because the reality is uh, they're not that bad. 
the Indians averaged 21,000 fans uh, per game, I think, the last couple of years. And it might have been a tick above 21,000. But I know that the Indians fans are pissed off because, well, the Indians traded away Francisco Lindor. Uh, well, they were going to. Look, I mean, it's, the Indians were going to trade Lindor because you, they weren't going to sign him. They weren't going to sign him to a long-term deal. You know, that, you know, people can sit back and say, well, you know, our, our ownership is blah, blah, blah. Okay. There's a disconnect. There's certainly a disconnect. And we've talked about this. We've talked an awful lot about this. There's a disconnect between uh, the owner, Mr. Dolan, Paul Dolan, and the fans. Uh, it's, it's, no, you know, it's no secret Paul Dolan is not very well liked by the fans. It's also no secret that the Indians, over the last seven full Major League Baseball seasons, have averaged over 90 wins a year. And in those seven full Major League Baseball seasons, the Indians' attendance has been bottom third. Now, having said that, the television ratings have also been top five of the, of the Major League Baseball teams. Uh, so there is a disconnect there. Uh, there is a sense that the Indians fans don't trust Paul Dolan. Now, I have said on a number of occasions, look, I mean, if there's a great product, you should be supporting a great product. Uh, if you're not supporting the great product by going out and seeing the team and spending money to to see the team, well, then this owner uh, and any owner worth their salt isn't going to spend that much money. It's a business. You know what people don't realize is you know this is not just Major League Baseball. They're also taking care of all of the minor league uh, uh, situation. They're taking care of the utility bills. The anytime there's a night game, the, the, who's paying the electric bill for the stadium? Well, the owner is. You know, there's a lot of other things that are that, that are being paid as well as the players' salaries. You know, the front office has to get paid. The you know the uh, the ushers have to get paid. The utility bills have to get paid. The minor league uh, baseball uh, players have to get paid. There's there's a lot of bills, and you know I understand that people can sit back and say, well, we're doing our part by watching games on TV. Well, not you, not really. You're not really doing your part. It's the television contracts. Okay, that's a one-shot, one-year kind of a thing. And if you're watching games, great. If you're watching games, that's fantastic. But whether you watch games out the wazoo or not, the Indians are still going to get the same amount of money. Every Major League Baseball team is still going to get the same amount of money every single year because it's a contract. Whether you watch the games or not is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. I mean, they're still going to get the same amount of money uh, whether you watch the game or not, that's not the same when you don't go to a game. So it's just, unfortunately, there's a disconnect there. Hopefully uh, they can uh, somehow drop the swords and, and, and go to games. But, you know, with the fact that the uh, favorite son has been traded, I'm sure that the divide is going to be uh, that much deeper, and there there will probably people be people, I should say, that will sit back and say, I don't want to watch this team. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if the Indians don't uh, sell out every single game. I mean, they should. 10,500 is not that big of a number. Uh, they should be selling out every single game, but it wouldn't surprise me if they don't. There's a lot of angry people uh, that are Indians fans. There's a lot of angry people, and eh, I mean, look, I could I can flat out say this without any hesitation. Of the three owners in Cleveland, Dolan is by far and away the best owner of the three owners. Now, you can sit back and say, well, hang on a second. You know, the Cavaliers did win a championship. Well, let's also be honest. When LeBron James isn't playing for the Cleveland Cavaliers, uh, Dan Gilbert's team suck. Now, unfortunately, this year, it's a matter of a lot of guys are hurt. Uh, they're losing and losing ugly and getting embarrassed on a nightly basis. And frankly... Uh, there's a lot of problems over there. Uh, and, and injuries are the biggest culprit. Now, this might be a blessing in disguise for this team to get another lottery selection. I, d I don't know. 
I, I was thinking this team was a playoff team, but I- if anything, it showed that there is absolutely positively no depth with the in- with the uh, Cavaliers organization in terms of of the players because there's a rash of injuries in Cleveland and. Clearly, without Nance, without Love, without uh, a couple of other players, this team has gone into the toilet and have played embarrassingly bad defense. And they've gotten their asses kicked every single night on a just a horrible, horrible, embarrassing type of level. Now, a lot of that has to do, unfortunately, uh, with the injuries. But the Cavaliers, I mean, okay, Dan Gilbert has a championship banner. The only owner, the only owner in the last, I don't know, 50 some odd years that has hoisted a championship banner. Okay. Fair enough. But you also have to understand that when LeBron James is not in a Cavaliers uniform, the winning percentage down the toilet. When the Indians winning percentage in the twenty one years that Paul Dolan has owned the tribe, it's over five hundred. Uh, and in the last seven full Major League Baseball seasons, this team is averaging over 90 wins a season. And they have gone to the World Series. Uh, so it's not like this team hasn't been successful. And then you have Jimmy Haslam, who I guess in the last couple of years has finally figured out that he can't be a meddling owner. Now, whether or not this continues to trend upward, I have my doubts. Uh, you know, look, I mean, I, I, I have my doubts. I, I have my doubts on a couple of issues with, with the Browns. Uh, whether or not this comes to fruition, I don't know. I mean, uh, it's, as far as I'm concerned, though, I mean, Haslam has, again, I'll give him credit, in the last year or so, he's finally backed away and let, you know, what I have said for forever and a day, the, the ingredient to a winning organization, you let the players play, you let the coaches coach, you let the general manager uh, run the business side of, of baseball within the, uh, you know, within the playing field. The president is the bean counter, and he or she is responsible for the business side away from the sport, and then the owner is just planning his or her backside in their owner's box with a bunch of their friends watching the product. That's how how it's supposed to happen. That's how you're supposed to have a winning organization. Uh, You know, owners that that don't meddle are the owners that wind up winning. They just simply are. I mean, I'll I'll go back, if you're a Steeler fan, I'll go back to Art Rooney Sr., the chief. He was terrible as an owner until he figured out, wait a second, now, all these years that I've been, you know, meddling and doing, you know, trying to get these people to do what I want them to do, uh, it hasn't worked. So when he hired Chuck Knoll 52, 53 years ago, yeah, I'm going to let Chuck do his, his thing. And lo and behold, the Steelers become a dynasty. And then he realized, huh, I guess I do have to mind my own business and trust the people that I've hired. And, and there you go. Simple as that. Same thing in San Francisco. Ed DeBartolo Jr., you didn't hear a peep out of this guy unless things were going bad. And, you know, Eddie Jr. was not the, you know, he didn't have the uh, calmest of demeanors, uh, but he allowed Bill Walsh to do his thing. He allowed the organization to do their thing. He trusted the people that he hired. And lo and behold, uh, they're winning championships. Bob Kraft at New England. Uh, lo and behold, they're winning championships because, you know, he let Belichick do his thing. He let the players play, the coaches coach, the general manager runs the business side on the field, on the court, on the diamond, on the uh, on the ice. The president is the bean counter away from the sport and the owner sits in his or her box and enjoys all of this. That's how you run a professional franchise. And Jimmy Haslam hasn't figured that out yet. Now, I think in the last couple of years, he has finally figured it out. Uh, and we'll see. We'll see if the Browns trend upward. I kind of have my doubts because I still have my doubts uh, whether or not this team is is good enough. Uh, we'll see in a couple of years. We'll see. Uh, they they went 11-5 and five this year. They, uh, they won a playoff game. Eh, we'll see what happens in 2021. Hopefully, uh, when we get to the fall, Everyone will be uh, without masks, and yeah, that would be nice. But anyway, Governor DeWine yesterday made the announcement that um, it'll be 30% 
of capacity for the two Major League Baseball teams. And I believe the um, uh, the ballpark in Cincinnati holds a little bit more fans uh, than Progressive Field. So I believe they're going to have, I think, 2,000 more people uh, available in the stands. But the Indians, uh, the number is somewhere in the vicinity of 10,500. Shouldn't be a problem selling those tickets. My only guess is um, I'm, I'm sure that they have 10,500 season ticket holders. And if that's the case, then the public is going to be SOL. I, I got to believe there's, I would be willing to say, five or 6,000, if not more, full time season ticket holders. And that would mean the folks that have purchased games, uh, purchased the entire home portion of the schedule, 81 games. I did this when um, when the Indians moved from the old municipal stadium to Jacobs Field, which is now Progressive Field. Uh, eight of my buddies and I got in on season tickets. We bought two season tickets. Uh, I think we're down uh, halfway down the left field line 13, 14 rows up. Pretty nice tickets. Pretty nice tickets. Uh, and th- those were our season tickets in 94. And then the strike happened. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, when we tried to figure out, okay, how many of you guys want to go back to doing tickets in 95, I think two or three of, uh, of us uh, decided they wanted to do it. And it got way too expensive. So obviously that w- was a one-year thing thanks to the 94 strike. But anyway, I got to believe there's about a good 6,000 people that are full-time season ticket holders. And then you have the half-year season ticket holders. They'll be at 40 games or 41 games. Uh, And and then you have the 20-gamer season ticket holders. Because there's, you know, three different, uh, three different things here. You can go to a, you can, you can do a twenty game package. You can do the half season package. You can do the whole kit and caboodle uh, package. And it's your, and you're in the same seats for these x amount of games. I gotta believe between the full, the forty, and the twenty game season ticket holders, there's your ten thousand five hundred. I got to believe that that's the case. If it's not 10,500, it's going to be pretty damn close. It, it'll, it'll be pretty damn close. So my guess is, and, and if I were a businessman, I surely would do this. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have any tickets in the uh, ticket sales in the bleachers. That's not going to happen. I'm not going to put uh, ticket sales in the third deck uh, out in right field and down the right field line. That's not happening. If you're going to buy a ticket, you're going to be buying a, one of the pricier tickets. I'm not going to be selling bleacher seats or, or these, you know, tickets that are 300, 400, uh, you know, 400 feet away. I'm not going to be buying, I'm not going to be selling those tickets. I have no interest in, in, uh, in selling those tickets. Cause if I only have 10,500 people coming into, coming into my ballpark, if I'm a businessman, I am surely not going to be selling the cheap seats. That's not going to happen. I'm going to be selling the more expensive seats, those that are, you know, not being used. Now, obviously, you're going to have to do the whole six-foot social distancing thing, and that could be one of those issues where, all right, this row is going to be uh, taken uh, taken off the off the charts, and you're going to have to, uh, you know, if you're normally sitting in in seat number four and uh, somebody is already seating in seat number three, you're probably going to have to move from seat four to seat seven. Uh, I I mean, I don't know how the hell they're going to do this. But all I know is about 10,500 tickets are going to be available. And I got to believe most of the 10,500, if not all of the 10,500, are going to be from season ticket holders. Uh, public may not get their hands on a whole lot of tickets. That's for sure. Uh, having said that, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, I really think um, 
I really think folks are going to um, be surprised in a good way about the uh, about the Indians. I don't know about the Pirates. Pirates are Pirates are rebuilding, and and you know the Bucks are. You know, I mean, they got rid of Bell, they got rid of Tyone, they got rid of uh, a, a bunch of guys that, you know, were either going to be too old when this team was ready to contend or too valuable not to trade. I think in Bell's case, he was too valuable not to trade. They had to get as much for this guy. And Tyone, the same thing. Both of these guys, too valuable not to trade. In other words, they were looking to refurbish the farm system, and that's exactly what they did. Uh, now, are they going to be good this year? Eh, probably not. Yeah, they're probably going to wind up losing 100 games this year. There's a pretty good chance of it. And there's a pretty good chance the Pirates are picking first or second in the 2022 draft. And by the way, speaking of which, you may very well – I, I don't know if this would be the case or not, but you may very well see a future Pittsburgh Pirate and or a future Cleveland Indian, for that matter, uh, by going to see the Mahoning Valley Scrappers play, uh, being that they're now in the newly formed MLB Draft League. Uh, season starts in, in um, late May. The uh, season ends in mid-August. And all of these kids are essentially going to be playing to improve their draft stock in the upcoming MLB draft, which will be in, in accordance with the um, Major League Baseball All-Star uh, festivities in Atlanta this year. Uh, so the MLB draft is going to be held in mid-July during the All-Star break down in Atlanta. And most of the draft league season will be completed by the time these kids are you know drafted and one would hope that these kids play out the rest of the season and then you don't see them again uh the scrappers are going to be one of six teams that are going to be a part of this where the best of the best in college and high school uh, draft eligible kids are all going to be taking part in this league and it should be a fun fun league and I made mention of this there is a really good chance that there will be far more talent this year with the uh, with the talent level uh, this year than there would be in previous years in the New York Penn League uh, mainly because most, if not all, of these kids are going to be drafted. A high majority, if not unanimously, all of them will be drafted. Again, the season begins May the 24th. Uh, the season is over August the 13th. The break is in mid-July, uh, and that's that break is in accordance or in concordance with the Major League Baseball All-Star Game and the draft that's being held in the site of the Major League Baseball All-Star Game, Atlanta GA. Uh, so this this would be pretty fun. And, and for the folks around here, uh, you get an opportunity to see a lot of future minor leaguers and probably a good handful down the road of future major leaguers. Uh, Jordan Taylor is the GM for the Mahoning Valley Scrappers. We had him on a few weeks ago on the show. And they're going to be doing this. And the scrappers are going to be doing basically the same thing that they have done all these years. And that's basically, you know, treating this just like they would uh, a minor league baseball team. Uh, you're still going to have fireworks displays. You're still going to have the, uh, the giveaways. You're still going to have, uh, you know, theme nights, bobblehead nights be a lot of fun. This, this is going to be an awful lot of fun. The home opener, uh, by the way, is May the 26th against State College. That's the home opener. Uh, so this this is going to be an awful lot of fun. And again, uh, you could be looking at a future Indian. You could be looking at a future Pirate. 
a lot of these kids are going to be drafted. And I would venture to say a lot of these kids uh, will wind up finding their way into Major League Baseball. It'll be a fun league. I, 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 the more I think about this, if it is – if it is marketed the way it should be, this could be uh, this could be an awful lot of fun. By the way, Eastwood Field is going to be opening its gates to high school and YSU baseball games uh, coming up next March. Uh, Nine hundred is the maximum that they will allow to be permitted in the ballpark. This in concordance with Governor DeWine. Now that number should increase. It should increase by the time the scrappers open up their season in late May. Uh, news has gotten a whole lot better in, in terms of the coronavirus and, and how cases are starting to drop, even though I believe yesterday we went over a half a million deaths um, nationwide. Uh, the cases are starting to drop, which is a good thing. And hopefully by the time the scrappers season starts, uh, they will be able to play at a little higher than 30% capacity. Uh, 30% capacity on a 6,000-seat stadium, and I believe that's what Eastwood Field uh, holds is 6,000. 30% of that is 1,800. 1,800. Uh, that's 30% of 6,000. So hopefully we'll be able to go 2,500, 3,000, which should be able to uh, be more than enough to uh, to get the fans and get everyone jazzed up and ready to go uh, to watch some uh, to watch some some baseball. Uh, it, it, again, these will, these will be amateurs. They're not going to get paid, uh, but they're going to be essentially doing a long internship. And if you're really really good, well you're going to have an opportunity to get a high draft pick. And a high draft pick you know, means more money. Uh, and you better you better get that because uh, you're not getting paid that much when you get into minor league baseball. So, you know, the, the kids that are uh, top uh, top picks, they, uh, they live off their bonus money. They definitely live off their bonus money. All right, 330 886 0813. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We'll take a time out, be back with more. It is a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your wallet to check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Baird Brothers remains your source for fine hardwood products. For the time being, we're open for customer pickup only on weekdays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. till noon. Place your order online at BairdBrothers.com. Baird Brothers, for the place you love. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. The 4M company, being an architect and construction manager for over 40 years, has had the opportunity to use many different electrical businesses for our projects. The depth, quality, and knowledge and attention to detail displayed by Dickey Electric makes them stand out above all the rest. For state-of-the-art expertise and a timeless commitment to our customers, contact Joe Dickey Electric. We are everything electrical. I went to Greenwood Chevrolet because I was really interested in looking at the tracks. Because I wanted my dream truck. Because I've been going there for 20 years. I think whenever we go there, whatever car we're looking for, they have tremendous inventory. If you're looking for people who care about you, Greenwood is the, is the place to go. You know, it's like family there. The girls know me in service. It's Miss Kim in the Tahoe. I'm really happy that I went to Greenwood Chevrolet. Because they really went the extra mile for me. Now we're going the extra mile for you, only at Greenwood Chevrolet. 
Local teams are heating up the hardwoods, and you can keep up with all the action on and off the court with Five Guys Hoop News all season long on 21 Sports. When looking for home design inspiration, don't just be inspired, be Baird inspired. Whether new or remodeling, Baird Brothers has the latest trends like shiplap to refresh your home. Go from inspiration to installation with our wide selection of in-stock American hardwoods. From the rustic charm of antique oak to the warmth of traditional cherry, Baird Brothers has what you need to make your home inspiring. Baird Brothers, our family's heritage, your family's home. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, do yourself a favor and check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. All right, here is um, your schedule for tonight, a, a long, long, long list of games uh, that are going to be happening on the network tonight. And all of these games uh, can be viewed. The uh, pay-per-view package, nine ninety nine, dollars uh, And uh, your nine ninety nine ticket will get you a, uh, well, it'll, it'll get you every single game on the network tonight. Uh, and that would start at 645 from the Struthers Fieldhouse as the Niles Red Dragons will invade Struthers. Uh, your 7 o'clock games, and again, there are no junior varsity games now, so it's strictly varsity games, so these games will start at 7 o'clock. Lordstown is at Brookfield. Middlefield Cardinal visits Camel. Ravenna is at Canfield. Rootstown at Champion. West Geauga will visit Cheney. United at Crestview. Larry Scrag and I will be doing the uh, Crestview United game on the network tonight. Western Reserve is at Jackson Milton. Howland is at Lakeview. Notre Dame Cathedral Latin will visit Louisville. Bloomfield is at McDonald. Columbiana at Mineral Ridge. East Palestine will visit Newton Falls. Girard is at Salem. Conneaut will visit South Range. Maplewood is at Valley Christian. Hubbard will travel to West Branch. And Badger visits Wellsville. These are all the games that are on the network tonight. Uh, and again, $9.99 will get you access to all of these games on the network tonight. There are a number of games that unfortunately uh, will not be on the network tonight. Uh, we'll get you the entire schedule, but again, these games are on the network tonight. Let me repeat these games. It's 645, Niles visits Struthers. The 7 o'clock games, Lordstown at Brookfield, Middlefield Cardinal at Camel, Ravenna at Canfield, Rootstown at Champion, West Geauga visits Cheney, United is at Crestview, Western Reserve at Jackson Milton, Howland is at Lakeview, Notre Dame Cathedral Latin visits Louisville, Bloomfield is at McDonald, Columbiana at Mineral Ridge, East Palestine visits Newton Falls, Gerard is at Salem, Conneaut at South Range, Maplewood visits Valley Christian, Hubbard is at West Branch, and Badger will visit Wellsville. Those are the games on the network tonight. And again, $9.99 is our pay-per-view price. This offsets the uh, cost uh, that, uh, that in which we have to pay the OHSAA for the video rights uh, to uh, to these games, so it does get a little uh, little cost, uh, you know, a little a little much on the cost uh, uh, end of things. Uh, hence the reason why we're uh, back to doing uh, the pay per view. Nine ninety nine uh, will get you all of these games on this Tuesday night of high school basketball. We'll take a timeout and be back with more. Stick around. It's a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. 
Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last 100 years, my family has farmed in the Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible tasting products. We are locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. Hi, this is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local, independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student-athletes in the Valley. Right now is a great time to get more for your trade-in at Tri-State Ford and drive home in a new or pre-owned vehicle. Choose from our great selection of new Ford models or pre-owned vehicles. Plus, get the Tri-State Ford Advantage, including a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty and more. At Tri-State Ford, we'll pay you top dollar for your trade, but you don't have to purchase one of ours to sell us yours. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit tristateford.net. Planning a project around your home or rental property? Trust the electrical service to the local experts with 62 years of serving the Mahoning Valley. Joe Dickey Electric is your local go-to source for responsive, reliable residential electrical work. From everyday maintenance and repairs to new installations, electrical upgrades, and safety inspections, no job is too big or too small. Call Joe Dickey Electric today, 800-549-3976, or visit DickeyElectric.com. That's DickeyElectric.com. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. Made mention that in the last three years, um, three previous years, this will be year number four that I'm keeping track of the high school tournament basketball record versus out-of-town opponents. Now, when I do this, uh, I look at our teams in the Mahoning Valley. Now, this was long before I was hired by YSN because uh, there are some schools here uh, that, that are a part of the YSN family that are not in uh, the three-county area. So I, I'm strictly dealing with the, the schools from Trumbull, Mahoning, and Columbiana counties and playing teams that are outside of those three counties in the tournaments, whether it be sectional, district, regional, or state. Now, unfortunately, we have not had a team advance to state in uh, in boys basketball in quite some time and we did have a uh, a team that went to state in the last 3 years West Branch girls uh this past year unfortunately uh, they never got a chance to play because that's when the you know what hit the fan uh when the OHSAA had the uh, girls walk off the floor 16 minutes before tip off as they were getting ready for a state semifinal game uh, so we've already had the sectional tournaments done. Now, I did have to go back and amend my numbers uh, because I did not include the two Columbiana County schools uh, that are not in, the, uh, not in the same tournament as all of the other schools. Beaver Local and East Liverpool are in a completely separate tournament 
uh, in, in which they're not even in the uh, northeast. They're, they're located in the eastern part of the state. So they were in completely different uh, tournaments than all of the other teams from Trumbull, Mahoning, and Columbiana counties. So because of that, I had to rework uh, the sectional tournaments for the girls this past year. Pal- I'm sorry, uh, Beaver Local and East Liverpool were both one and done, so that moved the sectional record from 16 and 10 to 16 and 12 because I forgot to add uh, Beaver Local and East Liverpool. So uh, the sectional tournaments are done. Uh, and for the last four years, I'm uh, proud to say that the girls have been above 500 all four years in sectional tournament play. In 2017-2018, the girls were 12 and 11. 2018-2019, they were 12 and 6. 2019-2020, they were 10 and 4. Uh, and this past year, or this year, I should say, 2020-2021, uh, they are 16 and 12. The boys will begin sectional play tonight. In two of the three years, the boys have been above 500. They were 12 and 11 in 2017, 2018. By far and away, uh, the ugliest year for basketball uh, for the boys, 2018, 2019, where they were 6 and 10 uh, against out of town competition uh, in the sectional tournaments. Last year, they were 10 and 6. Plenty of games are going to be played in the first round of the sectional tournaments uh, against out-of-town opponents. As a matter of fact, let's uh, run down that list while we have uh, while we have a moment. Uh, East will be at Streetsboro, so that's a that's one game. Ravenna is at Canfield. That would be another game. Uh, West Geauga will travel to Cheney. Middlefield Cardinal is at Camel. Rootstown is a champion. Conneaut is at South Range. Uh, Chalker is at uh, St. Thomas Aquinas. Letonia is at Lake Center Christian. So that's eight. Eight in the first round and uh, probably a number more uh, in the uh, second round a.k.a. the sectional championship games. Uh, so eight uh, in the in the first round. Actually, it'll be nine when Fitch plays Ashtabula Lakeside on Wednesday. So it'll be nine first-round games in which the three county area teams, uh, basketball boys basketball teams from uh, – Actually, it'll be 11 because Beaver Local and East Liverpool are going to be playing games. So it will be 11. Uh, Trumbull, Mahoning, and Columbiana counties. There will be a number of games in the sectional tournaments for the boys. Uh, And we'll see how many wins our local teams from the three-county area can get against the out-of-town opponents. Uh, The district tournaments uh, begin tonight in Division I. There's only one Division I team left. Uh, in our area, and that's Canfield. They go up against Stowe Monroe Falls tonight up at Stowe, which is just outside of Akron, Uh, and we'll see what uh, Canfield does in this particular game. Uh, As far as district semifinal games go, that's that's the first one that's going to be uh, against an out-of-town opponent. Kenston is at Salem. West Geauga is at Poland. West Branch is at Marlington. So there's four games right there. Uh... And the fifth game will be Jackson Milton at East Canton. By the way, in the uh, three previous years, the girls have gone two and three, zero oh and six, and two and three in district play. So against the out of town opponents, our area in the last three years in girls' basketball is 4-12 and 12 combined uh, against the out-of-town opponents. And regional play, uh, not, not that good. Uh, regional play, they are 3-9 and nine, uh, against, the, um, against the region. Uh, the boys in district play in the last three years, they are 6-15. and 15 and one and five 
in regional play. One and five. So there you go. All right, 330 888- 886-0813, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We made mention uh, earlier today uh, the Horizon League has announced their all-league selections for both the men's and women's basketball season. Uh, the men are going to be represented by a trio of players. Garrett Covington was named the all-defensive team. I believe that is the second year that Garrett Covington has received that honor. Shamir, uh, Shamar Rattan Mays uh, is on the all-freshman team. Congratulations to uh, the Toronto, Ontario native. Uh, Shamar Rattan Mays on the all-freshman team. And Nas Bohannon made the All-Horizon League second team. Second team All-Horizon League for Nas Bohannon. How in the world he's not on the first team is you know, it's beyond me. Uh, I get uh, I get tired of of uh, seeing just how uh, crazy uh, these folks have uh, not exactly done uh, well for <laughs> for Youngstown State. Uh, Nas, you you can't convince me Nas Bohannon isn't one of the five best players. In the Horizon League, I'm sorry, you just can't. That, that just that is such a slight, unbelievable. Uh, your uh, three representatives for the YSU women, a league high three Penguins, have been named to the Horizon League teams. Uh, Neka Obiizer was named the Freshman of the Year. By the way, she was named Freshman of the Week four different times during the course of the Horizon League season. Uh, so it's no surprise that Neka Obiizer was named Freshman of the Year. She was also named to the All Horizon third team, along with Chelsea Olson. Uh, both Chelsea Olson and Neka Obiizer selected All Horizon League third year team or third team, third team All Horizon League. Mary Dunn uh, was selected All Horizon League second team. Uh, All Horizon second league uh, second team uh, for Mary Dunn. So congratulations to Neka Obiizer, Mary Dunn, and Chelsea Olson. All right, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. Plenty of things to talk about. Boys basketball tournament gets underway. Everyone is at zero wins and zero losses, and it's a single elimination tournament. Uh, You lose once, you're done. Uh, This is my favorite time of the year for high school basketball. Upsets galore can happen. And on the hardwoods tonight, all of these games uh, are going to be played uh, Division Two, Division Three, and Division Four first round sectional games in boys basketball. Niles is at Struthers, East is at Streetsboro, Ravenna at Canfield, Howland at Lakeview, Gerard at Salem, Hubbard at West Branch, West Geauga at Cheney. All of those D2 games will start at 7 o'clock. D3 games, they'll all get underway at 7 o'clock. Middlefield Cardinal is at Camel. Rootstown at Champion, Conneaut at South Range, Columbiana visits Mineral Ridge, United is at Crestview, Larry Scrag and I will be broadcasting that game on the network tonight, Jefferson is at Grand Valley, and East Palestine will visit Newton Falls. All of those games will start at 7 o'clock. And finally, Division Four sectional first round games. Matthews is at Southern Badger at Wellsville. Chalker at St. Thomas Aquinas. Lordstown is at Brookfield. Bloomfield at McDonald. Maplewood will visit Valley Christian. Letonia is at Lake Center Christian, and Western Reserve will visit Jackson Milton. One girls district game going to be played tonight. Canfield is at Stowe Monroe Falls. And uh, those are the games that are on tap for tonight in boys as well as girls basketball. All right, we'll take a timeout and be back with more of the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 
330-886-0813. That's 330-886-0813. The MPV Vo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We're back in a bit. It's a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient, rude gas furnace or air conditioner from MPV Vo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy efficient expert MPV Vo today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on Rude, and so should you. Myers Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. High-res future cash shows steady snow for the next few hours. Still just downright cold. It is bitter out there. Several strong bands of lake effect snow. Wind is kind of the big story today as well. So if you need a more detailed winter forecast on WFMJ.com and the Storm Tracker 21 app. I went to Greenwood Chevrolet because I was really interested in looking at the tracks. Because I wanted my dream truck. Because I've been going there for 20 years. I'm really happy that I went to Greenwood Chevrolet. Because they really went the extra mile for me. Now we're going the extra mile for you, only at Greenwood Chevrolet. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Hi, everyone. This is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. For heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoney Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. News doesn't stop after the sun goes down. Sometimes you just have to hustle to get it. At 21 News, no matter how far it is, no matter what it takes to get there, we're working to bring you the best stories and the freshest content at 11 p.m. with the context and clarity that makes it worth staying up for, no matter what time it is. 21 News at 11 with me, Aaron Simonek and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 11, news that's worth your time. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. The MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. 
336-0813. That's 330-886-0813. Cavaliers in action tonight against the Atlanta Hawks. Cavs are on a, uh, what is it, a 10-game losing streak. Uh, they have been blown out of most, of, if not all, of the games. I mean, it's been god-awful. Uh, it's, it's been really, really bad. And unfortunately, the injury problems uh, that the Cavaliers have, uh, that is exposing the very uh, weak uh, depth that the Cavs have. Uh, they have no depth. I mean, it's, it's, this is a bad basketball team uh, when there's a bunch of injuries. And, again, they've been without Kevin Love. They've been without Larry Nance. They've been without uh, a bunch of other players. Uh, Andre Drummond is not playing because the Cavaliers are looking to trade him. It's just it, the situation has gotten really tough, really tough. Uh, they were 10 and 11 when the losing streak started, and I believe – uh, when the losing streak started, they were still top five, top ten in defense. They have since gone all the way to last place in uh, in defense, and it's uh, it's been ugly. It just has been. There's no sugarcoating it. It has been ugly uh, with the uh, with the Cavaliers. They're you know, ten and twenty one. Uh, they are. Not playing good basketball, and and uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, it's like I said, this could be a blessing in disguise in that the Cavaliers can get another uh, uh, another lottery selection. I had high hopes for this team, but I also knew that this team needed to um, they needed to not have a bunch of injuries because uh, this team was not very not very deep. Uh, and if there were injuries, there would be a lot of problems. And unfortunately, the injuries have occurred. Uh, hence, a lot of problems have also occurred. Uh, so the Cavaliers are home to Atlanta tonight. Uh, the Penguins are skating in Washington. The Blue Jackets are home to Chicago. Uh, both the Penguins and the Blue Jackets outside of the top four spots right now. Uh, I believe the Penguins are tied uh, four fourth with Philadelphia. Uh, the Blue Jackets are currently two points in back of Chicago for the fourth and final spot in the Central Division. This year, you're playing your own division exclusively. We had Tom Callahan on. I owe uh, TC a call. Uh, he should he should get back on our program here before too long. Uh, Tom Callahan. Uh, the Eastern Division: Boston, Washington, the Islanders, the Rangers. Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, New Jersey, Buffalo. Uh, the Central Division, uh, Florida, Carolina, Tampa, Chicago, Columbus, Dallas, Nashville, Detroit. Uh, the Canadians have their own division, Toronto, Edmonton, Winnipeg, Montreal, Calgary, Vancouver, and Ottawa. And then the West has their own division with uh, St. Louis, Vegas, Colorado, Los Angeles, Anaheim, Arizona, San Jose, Minnesota. And then the top four teams in each of their divisions, uh, they'll go best of seven. One will play four, the two seed will play the three seed, uh, and then you'll have the uh, division finals, and then each division uh, you'll have one team each when it's all said and done, uh, and then you'll have your your uh, best of seven uh, tournament. I believe the East will play the Central uh, the West will play uh, the Canadian division. Now, I I, I got to believe that, let's say, uh, because Toronto is playing such really good hockey, I got to believe that if Toronto wins this, they would play the winner of the East because it makes more sense. It, it makes a lot more sense to do it that way uh, because Toronto's in the East and you have the Eastern division. Now, let's say Edmonton, who's – right now in second place in the north, uh, let's say Edmonton wins. Well, then obviously it makes sense for Edmonton uh, to play whoever comes out of the west, uh, especially if it's Vegas, Los Angeles, Colorado. It makes sense because geographically that's where it should be. I'll be curious to see if, if, the, um, if the west versus the north is set in stone. That's the, one of the reasons, one of the many reasons why, why uh, we owe Tom Callahan a uh, phone call. Don't know if anyone saw this or not. And this is away from uh, from 
uh, local sports or regional sports, if you will. Uh, the Seattle Mariners uh, announced the resignation yesterday of their president and CEO, Kevin Mather. Kevin Mather made some pretty interesting comments at a Rotary Club meeting. Uh, and he was telling the uh, Rotarians in the uh, Great Northwest, in the Seattle area, that a couple of the kids, uh, they're one kid from the Dominican, one kid from, uh, from Japan, their English was, quote, terrible, uh, that they were tired of spending money on, uh, on the uh, translators and paying them out the wazoo. Uh, for the money, and and then he was basically said something that I've known all along, uh, that uh, he was more than likely going to be holding back some of their top prospects, uh, just so the free agency clock would go to another year, and this has been widely known in throughout Major League Baseball. It's been widely known. It's you can't prove this, but it's. It's so abundantly clear, even though you cannot prove it. It is abundantly clear. Uh, the Chicago Cubs are a great example. About six years ago, about five or six years ago, their Uber prospect, Chris Bryant, who is now a pretty decent third baseman. I don't think he's lived up to the hype, but you know he's, he's a pretty decent third baseman. Anyway, uh, the Cubs waited. Five years ago, it'll be six years this year, they intentionally waited to put Chris Bryant on the major league roster until a date was passed. The date essentially guaranteed themselves another year for Chris Bryant. His major league clock would then start in this particular time period and six years would take him to the end of the 2021 season. Had they called him up before opening day, Chris Bryant would have been a free agent at the end of the 2020 season. And pretty good chance that Chris Bryant doesn't come back to Chicago. He would have tested the open market. I don't know if he would have he would have been paid by anyone, but it's this is something that has been going on for the longest time. And I mean it's pretty simple. The the presidents and general managers, they understand there is a time, there's a certain time frame where if you call this player up, your Uber prospect, a day after this particular date you'll have them for an extra year. You'll have them for the entire 2021 year, and you'll have them for 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. After the 27 season, he will then become a free agent. So you would have them for seven years, well, six and change, instead of six years. There's a particular date. Once that date once you go past that date, if you call up a prospect uh, and he's never been in the major leagues, and that's another key part of this, that he would not be a free agent until seven years instead of six. It's a bone of contention. It's something that the union uh, has been very much against. Uh, but again, you can't prove it. Now, there's one of many, many reasons why I believe uh, when this season comes to an end, you are going to have a very ugly strike uh, that may very well do a lot more damage uh, than any other strike. But the reality is uh, the owners don't trust the players. The players don't trust the owners, and that's how it is. And one of the reasons why the the players don't trust the owners is because of shenanigans like this. And this guy flat out admitted, hey, I'm not, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna bring this guy up until the day after the uh, deadline. The day after the deadline, I'll bring him up and I'll have him for seven years instead of six. Okay. Uh, you know, I mean it's I guess that's one of the big reasons why <laughs> why he was let go because you know the owners they don't want that uh, they they don't want to be you know proven that that is the case and it is but you can't prove it. I mean you you can you know as as an owner or as a general manager you can sit back and say well this guy isn't ready for the show yet. Wait a second he's hitting three forty. 
in AAA ball. Why the hell isn't he called up yet? Eh, he's got some more seasoning to do. No, by seasoning you mean you've got to you've got to keep him in the minor leagues until this particular date is passed, and then you're going to bring his ass up a day after, and you'll wind up getting an extra year. It's business. Yeah, I get it. It's business. It's business. But don't don't hand me the song and dance that this kid isn't ready. You're doing this for business purposes. Now it's illegal and it shouldn't be allowed. But you know, again. You can't prove it. You you can't prove it. You know it exists, but you can't prove it. The other part of it, uh, the, the the shots that he took with a couple of a uh, couple of couple of kids that didn't speak English very well. I believe he called one of the uh, one of the kids his English was terrible. Look, way back in the day, and and this is something that I wish Major League Baseball did more of. Um, I was blessed to be in the Dodger organization. Uh, Say what you will about the Dodgers being a, a team that spends a ridiculous amount of money, and, and they do. I mean, it's, there's no two ways about it. They're, they're one of the members of the evil empire that spends well over $200 million for their payroll, and it sucks, uh, especially if you're a team or a fan of a team that's not spending that much money, and I'm looking at you, Pirates and Indians fans. I mean, the, the discrepancy is ridiculous, but I digress. One of the things that the Dodgers did for a long time, and and I really, truly believe that this needs to be put back into play. I don't believe it is in play now. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm almost positive it isn't. It needs to be put back into play. When I started out, and this is, it'll be 18 years this year, um, my first job in organized ball. I did I did independent ball um, broadcasting games, uh, 98, 99, 2000, and 2001. I did games for an independent league, which is completely different than a, than a minor league, a um, organizational minor league team. The first experience that I had in organizational baseball was at the Los Angeles Dodgers. And the Los Angeles Dodgers did something that I truly believe needs to be done a lot more frequently. Every year in spring training and every year when the minor leaguers went to Vero after their minor league season ended, uh, they would have uh, the uh, postseason little camps where they would invite certain players. If if you got this invite, you were considered to be on their radar. You were you were considered to be on their radar. But prior to the start of the season, the Los Angeles Dodgers would have you know, the minor leaguers would work out in the backfields in Dodger Town in Vero. Vero Beach is a community about three hours to the north of Miami. It's absolutely gorgeous. And Dodger Town was one of the finest places I've ever seen. In the evening, they would have a school teacher. Someone from Vero Beach High School, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong on that. But they had a school teacher. And this school teacher, his or her job was to teach English to all of the kids who were born outside of the United States. Now, a lot of folks probably know this by now, but there is a large amount of kids that are playing baseball that are not born in the United States. Uh, I would venture to say it's right now close to 50-50. The amount of kids in your in the organization, the 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 total amount of kids in your organization, I, I'd probably say sixty forty. The American born kids are still the majority, although not a not a really high majority. Uh, there's a lot of kids that were born in Central America, in South America, Latin America, uh, in the in the uh, Pacific, uh, the Asian rim, if you will, uh, uh, Japanese, uh, Korean. Um, Taiwan, China, who escaped communist China uh, via through Taiwan, Hong Kong, whatever. Uh, and, and a lot of these kids are playing baseball. But a lot of these kids are not good 
and, and they don't speak English very well. They're, they're not familiar with the language. One of the things I loved about the Dodger organization was they had a teacher that every single night during training camp, these kids, for about an hour or so, were taught basic English, basic English skills. And it was required. You, you, if, you're, if you were not born in the United States and you do not have a grasp of the English language, you're going to be attending these classes. And I think this is something that Major League Baseball needs to do. It, it definitely needs to do. I, it, look, I mean, it's the, again, we're going to go back to the business aspect of this game. Uh, the, the Seattle uh, president who was, who was recently dismissed had made mention that he had to spend $75,000 for the entire year for an interpreter uh, for one of his players. I believe the player was, uh, was Japanese. And this particular player didn't speak English very well. Uh, he was more comfortable with the... Um, with the translator, while well, they had to pay this translator seventy five thousand dollars a year uh, to be at this person's beck and call whenever he was approached by the press, uh, you ask the question to the interpreter. The interpreter uh, will ask the question in Japanese to the to the player. The player answers the question. The interpreter gives the answer back in English. It's a pain in the ass, Man, uh, Ramirez was, uh, and, and I believe uh, still does, with the Indians. Uh, Jose Ramirez, I mean, the last time I was in Cleveland, I want to say a couple of years ago, uh, he had an interpreter. And a lot of these guys, they, they're not comfortable speaking English. So they want an interpreter. When I was in the minor leagues, I had, you know, I would normally have one of the players on every single Every single pregame show, I would have one of the players on, and I'd also, uh, you know, interview someone else. There'd be a couple of interviews in the 15-minute pregame show, and, and then you get the game started. And I'd always wanted to have all of the guys do at least one interview. And unfortunately, you ran into kids that, weren't comfortable speaking English. And, and there were some kids that couldn't speak English at all. And that, that was, they were going to be a no-go on this. And I I don't know why Major League Baseball has dropped the ball on this, but I think it it, it's, it most certainly needs to be done. Uh, if, you're, if you're in training camp and you're going to be playing Major League Baseball or you're going to be playing minor league baseball, professional baseball, uh, and, you know, during training camp, after, you know, after your workouts and whatnot are done in the afternoon, kids that are not familiar with the English language, you go into, into the classroom and every single day or in the evening for an hour or so, you should be given a crash course in the English language. It's going to help the organization out tremendously, and also it, it helps out the members of the media that want to interview the players. It'll help them out tremendously. Now, I, I will say Jose uh, Ramirez has gotten better uh, with his English, but it, it's still where he has his translator every now and then. Uh, and, you know, it's tough. I mean, you're asking a question, and, you know, you got to wait to hear the answer in Spanish, and then they, you know, they translate it to English. I mean, it's tough. It's, it's tough. And, and, and if you're, you know, if you're getting a sound bite for a game, that's kind of a, you know, it's kind of a tough thing to do to, to get a sound bite because the interview is going to be a little bit longer because, you know, the answers are going to be, it's going to take a little bit of time to get the answer. The translator will, uh, will, give your question in Spanish and then the player is going to answer it in Spanish and the translator is going to answer it in English. I mean, it's tough. It's, it, it's, it's difficult. Now I will say, um, my Spanish is me. Yo hablo un poco español. Un poco. Uh, so, you know, I got by a little bit, you know, I would say hi and, and see how everyone was doing the Hispanic players that were, that were playing, but you know, to, to have a conversation, Hell no, I couldn't do it because I didn't speak the language. Uh, but I thought that, you know, what the Dodgers did makes sense. 
And, and I think that it would would most definitely make sense uh, for those players to learn the language. Absolutely does. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We made mention a lot of basketball games as the tournaments are beginning in earnest tonight for the boys. Uh, there's just one girls game tonight. It is a district semifinal game as Canfield will visit Stowe Monroe Falls. That game starts at 7 o'clock, but there is a uh, crazy amount of games uh, tonight. D2, D3, and D4. All of these games are going to be starting at 7. Niles is at Struthers. East is at Streetsboro. Ravenna at Canfield. Howland at Lakeview. Girard at Salem. Hubbard at West Branch. And West Yaga uh, visits Cheney. Division 3, Middlefield Cardinal is at Camel. Rootstown is at Champion. Conneaut at South Range. Columbiana at Mineral Ridge. United at Crestview. Jefferson at Grand Valley. And East Palestine will visit Newton Falls. And finally in Division 4, Matthews is at Southern. Badger at Wellsville. Chalker is at St. Thomas Aquinas. Lordstown is at Brookfield. Bloomfield at McDonald. Maplewood at Valley Christian. Letonia is at Lake Center Christian. And Western Reserve is at Jackson Milton. All of those games will be starting at 7 o'clock. Now, I believe Beaver Local is in action um, tonight. I believe Beaver Local is in action tonight. I'm, I'm going to uh, have to look here real quick. All right, they're not. They're in action tomorrow night. Uh, Beaver Local is at New Philadelphia tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. This is in the uh, Division II East District. Uh, the East District. Uh, the uh, the school that plays in the EBC with Salem and West Branch and Canton South, Minerva is in this tournament as well. They're going to be playing Ganadin Hooten Indian Valley. Uh, that game will be played at Minerva High School uh, at 7 o'clock. Also, um, East Liverpool is going to be in action on uh, Wednesday night. They're going to be playing Duncan Falls Philo. That game will be at East Liverpool at the Potter Fieldhouse. Uh, so Beaver Local and East Liverpool are in action tomorrow night uh, in Division Two. Beaver Local is at New Philadelphia, and Duncan Falls Philo will visit Steuben, or I'm, I'm sorry, will visit East Liverpool. Uh, so Beaver Local and East Liverpool in action on Wednesday night. Uh, Wednesday night, and if they happen to win. If both of those teams happen to win, uh, Beaver Local would take on, if they beat New Philadelphia, they would take on the winner of the, the uh, Ganadin Hooten Indian Valley Minerva winner. Uh, and that game would be played on Saturday night at 7 p.m. If East Liverpool knocks off Duncan Falls Philo, East Liverpool will get the winner of Cambridge and Steubenville. Uh, Cambridge and Steubenville uh, is going to be played in Steubenville uh, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock. I believe East Liverpool is the higher seed, so that would be a home game uh, at Potter Fieldhouse. But uh, if, if East Liverpool knocks off Duncan Falls Philo, uh, they would get the winner of Cambridge and Steubenville in the uh, sectional championship game on Saturday night in um, – in Division Two, and again, uh, Division Two, Beaver Local and East Liverpool are the only two schools uh, from the area that will be in a completely different tournament uh, than all the other Division Two schools. Um, Beaver Local and East Liverpool are considered to be Eastern District teams. Now. It's interesting that that's the case because Wellsville, who is further south than Beaver Local, and one would argue is further south, albeit not by much, maybe a half a mile, but further south on Route 7 than East Liverpool, Wellsville 
is in the Northeast District. Yet Beaver Local and East Liverpool are not in the Northeast District, which I think is kind of weird uh, that a school which is further south than Beaver Local, uh, by about five miles, I might add, and further south, albeit <laughs> by a really tiny bit uh, than East Liverpool, but they are further south on Route 7. Uh, I find it weird that Wellsville is considered to be a northeastern school where Beaver Local, who is north of Wellsville, and East Liverpool, who is also north, albeit by about a half a mile, but they are north of Wellsville, they're not in the same tournament as Salem or West Branch or any of the other teams uh, that are in Division Two. It's interesting. It's just weird. Uh, very weird. All right, 330. 330- 886-0813, the MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning Hotline open for business. We congratulate again the Boardman boys and girls. They're both headed to state in the uh, bowling tournaments. Uh, the girls' state meet is set for March the 5th. Uh, that will be at Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl in Columbus. Also almost said Wayne's World. <laughs> Wayne's World, Wayne's World. Bowl of strike, <laughs> lots of spares, Wayne's World. No, no, it's not Wayne's World. It's Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl in Columbus. Cha. Uh, the boys will uh, will be uh, taking place on March the 6th uh, in Columbus at Wayne Webb's Columbus Bowl in Columbus. Uh, the Boardman boys finished second. The Boardman girls finished second, and they both – will be bowling for a state championship. So congratulations to the Boardman boys and girls bowling team, state-bound, as they both finished second in their district tournament. All right, we'll take a time out and be back with more. It is a Tuesday edition of Running Point, presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. We're back in a bit. New things happen all day. Some are good, some not so good. In today's complicated world, while you're busy working, playing, and living life, we're busy helping you make sense of the day's news. And there's only one place where it comes together with clarity, context, and accountability. It's 21 News at 6 with me, Madison Tromler, and Derek Steyer. 21 News at 6. It's what the day's news really means to you. Welcome home to a home made homier with Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods. Inspiration starts at BairdBrothers.com and is turned into reality when high-quality hardwoods are delivered right to your home. Baird Brothers has the latest design trends, shiplap and skinny lap interior siding, antique oak rustic flooring, and, well, you'll find them all at BairdBrothers.com. Ordered easily, delivered conveniently, enjoyed comfortably. BairdBrothers.com. WRS Wealth Advisors, the area's premier wealth and retirement specialists. Located on South Avenue in Boardman. Hi, this is Jim Myers with Myers Family Insurance, your local Medicare and retirement resource. We're excited to have sports back. Whether you're on the field or cheering from the stands, sports unifies communities and brings hope for the future. We're all one team working together. At Myers Family Insurance, we know the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. Hi, I'm Colin Chupa. And I'm Kelsey Clem from K-Squared Marketing. Our boutique marketing firm specializes in media planning and buying, public relations, event marketing strategies, and strategic sponsorships. We can integrate our services with your existing game plan, or we can be your entire marketing team. Your goals, our game plan. Let's, Let's win, win together. together. Call K Squared Marketing at 330-623-2730 or visit ksquared.marketing to learn more. Baird Brothers remains your source for fine hardwood products. For the time being, we're open for customer pickup only on weekdays, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. and Saturday from 9 a.m. till noon. Place your order online at bairdbrothers.com. Baird Brothers, for the place you love. Quality, customer service, and integrity. Those are the four words that have driven our success since 1957 at Joe Dickey Electric. 
Joe Dickey Electric is one Mahoning Valley landmark business that stays current with the requirements of our customers. Family owned and managed, we are an electrical contractor and energy solutions provider. Every member of our team adds to his or her skill set through ongoing training. Residential, commercial, industrial, automotive, and more. We keep ahead of the needs of our customers with a fleet of more than 50 vehicles and 24-7 emergency service, so you're never left in the dark. The 4M company, being an architect and construction manager for over 40 years, has had the opportunity to use many different electrical businesses for our projects. The depth, quality, and knowledge and attention to detail displayed by Dickey Electric makes them stand out above all the rest. For state-of-the-art expertise and a timeless commitment to our customers, contact Joe Dickey Electric. We are everything electrical. I went to Greenwood Chevrolet because I was really interested in looking at the tracks. Because I wanted my dream truck. Because I've been going there for 20 years. I think whenever we go there, whatever car we're looking for, they have tremendous inventory. If you're looking for people who care about you, Greenwood is the, is the place to go. You know, it's like family there. The girls know me in service. It's Miss Kim in the Tahoe. I'm really happy that I went to Greenwood Chevrolet. Because they really went the extra mile for me. Now we're going the extra mile for you, only at Greenwood Chevrolet. Local teams are heating up the hardwoods, and you can keep up with all the action on and off the court with Five Guys Hoop News, all season long on 21 Sports. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point, presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. If you're in the market for a brand new or slightly used automobile, you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your checking accounts, you owe it to your savings accounts to check out the good folks at Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austintown. Coming up at the top of the hour, we will chat with the baseball manager at Youngstown State University, Dan Bertolini. His team uh, got off to a uh, start over the weekend. They uh, played Troy, lost three out of four to Troy. It was good to see the Penguins uh, on the baseball diamond uh, as they took uh, they uh, dropped three out of four to Troy. Uh, they will open up a series against Nichols State and LSU this weekend. Uh, they'll play a Friday game against Nichols State, an early afternoon game on Friday, and then Friday evening uh, they will take a trip down or up, I should say, to Baton Rouge uh, as uh, 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 Nichols State is in uh, Thibodeau, which is an hour south of Baton Rouge in Louisiana closer to the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, They'll take a trip an hour north from Thibodeau to Baton Rouge on Friday, play that game against LSU. Saturday, it'll be an afternoon game uh, at Baton Rouge against uh, LSU. And then on Sunday, the Penguins will play Nichols State. Uh, So they'll play Nichols State on Friday and Sunday afternoons. And then on uh, Friday night and Saturday afternoon, the Penguins will be taking on one of the best teams in college baseball. I believe they are number 12, number 12 or number 13 in the latest uh, Baseball America Top 25 poll in uh, the LSU um, Tigers. And we will have uh, pitching coach Alan Dunn from the LSU Tigers on tomorrow afternoon at about 1230 and we'll uh, talk a little bit about LSU and what to expect from the uh, Tigers and their uh, very, very good baseball program uh, that will once again be uh, trying to win a Southeastern Conference championship. Uh, So Dan Bertolini will be coming up in about eight minutes. We'll get his take on the opening weekend Penguins drop three out of four to Troy, but uh, you know what? We're we're playing baseball, and that's all that matters, and uh, this team will get better. There's no two ways about that. Uh, Coming up on Saturday, the YSU football team opens up their home portion of the eight-game schedule against Northern Iowa. Uh, Kickoff is set for 12 noon at Stambaugh Stadium. Now, here's the deal. And I want everyone to be aware of this. You are not going to be able to get any tickets for this game the day of the game. It's not going to happen. They're not going to sell any tickets the day of the game. 
if you want to go see the Penguins play on Saturday, you are going to have to go to the ticket office. You're going to have to make a call. You're going to have to go online. Uh, You're going to have to get your tickets prior to Saturday because they will not be selling tickets day of the game. There is also no tailgating at Stambaugh this year. Uh, with COVID, unfortunately, uh, there's a lot of things that, uh, that you won't be doing. Uh, you're not going to be doing any tailgating, and you're not going to be getting tickets day of the game. If you want the tickets, you got to get them between now and Friday. Otherwise, you're SOL. You're not going to the game. Now, as far as the weather forecast is concerned, it's actually not a bad forecast. Showers in the morning then turning partly cloudy in the afternoon. Now, keep in mind, it is Tuesday and, well, what are we, four days out from the the game? I'll wait until Thursday to take it seriously. But the long-range forecast is encouraging. The high is supposed to be near 50 degrees, partly cloudy skies in the afternoon. It's not bad. That's actually a pretty nice forecast. Uh, it could be a heck of a lot worse. I mean, we are in, in late February, after all. Uh, it could be a heck of a lot worse. But Northern Iowa is coming to town. Northern Iowa lost to South Dakota State. Uh, and, and we talked with the voice of the YSU football program, Bob Hannon, yesterday afternoon. Uh, look, it's an eight-game conference schedule. If you're going to go and be a playoff team... Uh, playoffs playoffs uh if you're gonna go to the playoffs you got to win at least six games bottom line you're gonna have to finish in the top two or top three in the missouri valley football conference you're not gonna go to the playoffs unless you win six games bottom line northern iowa this is supposed to be their best team Supposed to be their best team in quite a while. They lost to South Dakota State. Now, no shame in losing to South Dakota State. We made mention of this uh, yesterday. Both teams were preseason ranked top five in the FCS poll. I think Northern Iowa was number two and South Dakota State was number five. There, there's no shame in the losing to a top five program. However, given the fact that Northern Iowa has to play North Dakota State, and they'll probably lose that game. Northern Iowa can't afford to lose another game. So you know that this team is going to be in a must-win mode come Saturday. Now, for the Penguins, they're a young team. Uh, Let's be honest. Playoffs? Nah, I'm not really thinking that this team is going to be a playoff team. But it would be a tremendous feather in the cap of one Doug Phillips and this program if they were to pull off the upset. And it's not out of the realm of possibility for the Penguins to pull off this upset. Uh, 3,600 tickets are available. You have until Friday to get your tickets because the tickets are not available come day, come game day. So if you want to uh, go watch the Penguins, uh, you got to give them a call. I think it's 330-941-1YSU. Uh, 330-941-1YSU. Uh, get your tickets. They're $20, uh, and uh, that's that's how they're doing it. Uh, the Saturday forecast, again, it's long range at right now, but it's encouraging. Showers in the morning, partly cloudy skies in the afternoon, a high near 50. Game time for all four home games, 12 noon. So it is a 12 noon start, all four home games. They're home for the next two Saturdays. They have Northern Iowa this Saturday, Southern Illinois one week from Saturday. So uh, come on out and let's try to get 3,600 people at Stambaugh Stadium. All right, we'll take a timeout. On the other side, we will catch up with the manager of the YSU baseball program, Dan Bertolini. Penguins off to a 1-3 and three start. They drop three out of four to Troy. We'll talk with the skipper for the YSU baseball team, Dan Bertolini. He's coming up next on the Tuesday edition of Running Points on YSNlive.com. 
Hello, I'm Greg Burbick with G. Burbick Farms. For the last 100 years, my family has farmed in the Columbiana and Mahoning counties. I began raising cattle in 1996 with the goal of providing a better product for you and your family on the dinner table. Our grass-fed and grain-supplemented black Angus beef were raised with no hormones, steroids, or antibiotics. We are known for our hometown-friendly service and incredible tasting products. We are locally owned and have customers across the tri-state area. Our products go from our farm to your family. Stop by our farm on New Buffalo Road or visit us on the web at gburbickfarms.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook. G. Burbick Farms, it just tastes better. Hi, this is Tommy Clem, owner of WRS Insurance Solutions. WRS Insurance Solutions is a local, independent agency that specializes in life, Medicare, long-term care, and disability products. Call us at 330-953-3722 or visit us at wrsinsurancesolutions.com to learn more. Good luck to all the student-athletes in the Valley. Right now is a great time to get more for your trade-in at Tri-State Ford and drive home in a new or pre-owned vehicle. Choose from our great selection of new Ford models or pre-owned vehicles. Plus, get the Tri-State Ford Advantage, including a 10-year, 200,000-mile warranty and more. At Tri-State Ford, we'll pay you top dollar for your trade, but you don't have to purchase one of ours to sell us yours. Customer focus, community driven. Tri-State Ford East Liverpool or visit TriStateFord.net. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Point presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Over the weekend, the YSU baseball Penguins got it started as they took a trip down to Troy, Alabama. Uh, the Penguins uh, dropped three out of four to Troy. They were able to salvage the final game of the series and joining me to talk about that series and to preview the four games coming up in Louisiana we bring in the manager in his fifth year don't you know at YSU Dan Bertolini Dan it's amazing that uh, you're in your fifth year I didn't think it was possible for you to be in your fifth year yeah time flies you know man you're not kidding flies when you're having fun Time does fly. Uh, listen, um, it, it, you open up the season in, in pretty warm weather on Saturday and Sunday. Now it was a little chilly on uh, on Friday night, but you know, I mean, we're penguins. We can we can deal with cold weather. Uh, talk a little bit about this uh, this weekend series against Troy and and what Troy brought to the table this weekend. Yeah, um, you know, I thought it was obviously great to get back out there and uh, and, and play some baseball. And, uh, you know, I know our guys were excited to get back on the field. Um, you know, early on we made some mistakes probably in, in game, really games one and two. We kind of made some mistakes that we typically wouldn't make, just, you know, some fly ball communication and some, you know, we lost some balls in the light. Um, just some things like that, some small details that happen throughout the, the game that you can't really simulate in, indoors, whether it's double cut stuff or, you know, just the game speeding up a little bit. Um, so we made some uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic mistakes that, you know, that, that we won't make as the year goes on. But, um, you know, I was, I was expecting there was going to be some mistakes, you know, early in the, early in the first couple of games. Um, you know, I thought Troy did a great job. Coach Smart does a great job with those guys. And they are, they are one of the more offensive teams that I've seen in, in the time I've been here. And we've played some really, really good teams um, with some really high-powered offenses. And they did a, a great job. They were they had great strike zone discipline. Um, they really made it difficult to – they didn't chase anything outside of the zone. They, they put good barrels on the ball. That, that park plays their, their style. The ball flies there. And they were able to get some balls in the air. Um, you know, I don't think – Either either Collins were particularly sharp um, with their best stuff, but they were still around the zone. Uh, we didn't we didn't walk a ton of guys. They just really they put a lot of barrels to baseballs, and um, we had opportunities. I think in games two and three, we we lost or, or we left twenty one runners on base in two games. So we had our opportunities. We just 
they just weren't quite there yet of, of making, you know, getting the big hit. And they got a lot of hits with guys in scoring position and two out hits. Um, they just kind of outplayed us. And then game four came around, and John Snyder uh, was was electric. Um, that was, you know, that was his best outing he's had since he's been here. Uh, he had everything working. You know, had had his velocity was a, was a couple ticks up, up to 95 for us with a good breaking ball and. Uh, just pitched a great game. We we attacked early. We ambushed. We got three runs in the first. And that's really all we needed. Uh, we had a one more with uh, Pads home run later in the game. But you know, I thought overall for the first weekend it was good. We got out there. We got our feet wet. I thought by Sunday we looked a lot more comfortable. I could just tell during our pregame warmup we just we looked more comfortable. And um, you know we played that way on on Sunday. So um, it's always good to kind of win that Sunday game, get some momentum going into this weekend. And, and, uh, you know, we'll be back ready to go today at practice. Skip, is that the process of the kids in Alabama, they're able to go outside a little more often? And while it's wonderful that we have the Watt Center, it's a godsend. Uh, kids are able to play uh, baseball when it's snowing and there's ice on the field like it is right now. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot, you know, it's, it's a lot better than not having an opportunity to uh, to play baseball at all now unfortunately it you know it's 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 a whole lot different when you're outside and was that the reason why we we got off to a slow start in terms of of tracking fly balls in the outfield yeah yeah definitely especially at night it was it was you know we haven't been under the lights at all and just you know it was tough when they got up when those fly balls got above the lights um, even their guys sometimes had a couple couple plays where they barely caught fly balls. Um, and for us, you know, in years past, we were able to get outside a lot more. This year, I don't think since we started team practice in like the January 29th or whatever that was, I don't really think we got out. We got out one time um, in that in that stretch of three weeks where we were able to get out and get a couple ground balls outside, hit a couple fly balls, you know, off of fungo. But we weren't able to see – um, you know, really anything off the bat. Where in years past we've been outside a little bit more. So yeah, it was it was a little bit tricky. We practiced super late on Thursday night. I think we rolled into their place around 10 o'clock at night. Our guys just wanted to get out, and we were able to take some BP and kind of. I could tell our guys were having trouble tracking in that batting practice session, so I knew it was going to be difficult. But um, but we'll get we'll get better at it. They they felt much more comfortable as the weekend went on. And, and we played much better defense. I don't think we made any errors in Sunday's game. So um, we played we played pretty clean ball. You know, I'm looking at some of the uh, some of the players that uh, that played well. Uh, some of the everyday players. I know uh, Ducenio and and uh, Blaze Glenn went yard uh, in the second game of uh, of the doubleheader. Uh, I, I know that uh, Caruso went yard the first game of the season. Uh, you know, I mean, some solid performances by the everyday players uh, th- this weekend, Skip. Yeah, I mean, honestly, we it wasn't we we were just a little spread out, you know. And I think game one we had we had six hits. I think five different guys had them. Um, same thing in games two and three. It wasn't like you know one guy was just you know extremely hot. I know Blaze had a couple good games, especially the last two games. He really swung the bat well, um, was on base a lot, but. Uh, you know, and, and we kind of figured it out. We got a couple two-out hits, two strike hits on that Sunday game. I think both of our first two, all three of our runs came on two-out, two-strike hits. Um, and those are those are how you win baseball games. That's how you win championships, being able to score runs, you know, with two outs and being able to put the ball in play with two strikes. Now, their Friday night guy was incredible. He had electric stuff going all night, really gave us fits. We had trouble um, he could, he was locating everything. He had command. It was hard. It was up to 94, uh, good breaking stuff. So, uh, he had a, a, pull, a really great change up that really gave us some trouble. So you tip your cap to him on Friday, but I thought we got much better as the weekend went on. Skip, I'm looking at, uh, some of the, uh, some of the pitching I mean, you, you got some pretty decent pitching. Uh, now the, the two starters, uh, you know, the, uh, the Collins were, you know, they were roughed up a little bit. Uh, but as you mentioned, John Snyder, five innings, one run, three hits. It was a solo home run, one walk, six strikeouts. And, you know, I mean, you're playing in a, in a field that screams home run, especially with the short porch and right field. Uh, given the fact that, that Snyder was able to do a really fine job over five innings and then 
bullpen help that was tremendous. Uh, Hake, two-thirds of a, of a scoreless inning. Uh, Dalton Erich and uh, uh, Gary Cliff Jr. wound up getting the save on Sunday. Uh, you, you also had some terrific, uh, terrific uh, uh, bullpen work in the first game uh, of the doubleheader, uh, Andrew Russell pitched a, a scoreless inning. So, you know, you got some arms in the pen that showed off pretty well this weekend, Skip. I was I was really impressed with our bullpen. I thought they did a great job. We had some young guys get in there and get some action. Kenny Missick got his first uh, first action for us. Uh, he was injured last year, and I, he did a great job. Uh, Nathan Ball came in and threw a really strong inning. I mean, our bullpen, I think, only gave up maybe three or four runs all weekend. So, um you know, most of that damage was done early in the game. I thought Colin Floyd was pretty good. Uh, I know he gave, he gave up one bad pitch. It was, I mean, it was a good pitch. The guy hit a hit an opposite field home run on a on a on a fastball in. He just kind of got it got it out, got enough barrel on it to get over the right field fence on a right hander. Um, other than that, he pitched pretty well. Uh, you know, Colin Clark just wasn't super sharp. He still made some competitive pitches and kept us in the game. I think it was a six-run game for most of the game, um, and we had some opportunities. But yeah, I was I was really impressed with our bullpen. I thought they did a great job. They they uh, they came in, they threw strikes. We didn't walk hardly. You know, we 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 didn't walk very many people this whole weekend. Um, and uh, you know, that's the important part is you can give up some solo shots if you're not putting extra guys on base. So uh, I was impressed with that, and uh, hopefully we'll take that momentum and kind of move it into this weekend. And um, you know, I thought Brandon Matthews was another guy that did a really nice job too. If we don't see Drew Frederick ever again, that would be a nice thing. Uh, boy, that shortstop from Troy is uh, he's special. Although you guys shut him down pretty hard the final two games of the season, but my goodness, did he tee off the first two games of the year? They had a great they had a great scouting report and a great approach on our guys. Um, especially in, in, in games one and three. They were really, really on. Uh, they had a bunch of guys. I mean, they, they, they can really hit. That That's a great – that's going to be a really good team. Uh, they, they're going to be – you know, that's probably one of the best mid-major conferences in the country with Coastal Carolina and Louisiana Lafayette. You know, they got a lot of good play, a lot of good teams in that conference, Georgia State, App State. Um, you know, they'll have probably a couple regional teams come out of that conference. So – um, they're old. They're veteran. Frederick's a sixth-year senior. He's probably one of the best players in the whole league. Uh, their center fielder is a good player. Cerny. They had a, you know, preseason All-American catcher. So they, you know, they they are old and they were good. And um, they were a veteran club. They were hard to get out. And uh, I'm glad we don't have to face those guys again because uh, they got some good hitters. And it was a, it was a, they were tough outs every single pitch. Yeah, Logan Cerny on Saturday went five for five with two doubles and three home runs and drove in seven runs. I mean, I have a day, Mr. Cerny. Good God, that's that's. I mean, that that's incredible. Yeah, we did a good job against him on Sunday. I mean, John Snyder pitched really well against him. I don't think he had a hit um, on Sunday. So, uh, and our bullpen did a good job. I think he struck out in the last inning. So. Yeah, I mean, they were they were on fire. That you know, sometimes you run into a team that's just hot. They uh, they didn't have a weak spot early. You know, they just every guy in their lineup just seemed to get good contact on the ball. And we have good pitching. Uh, you know, I would expect that you know, these guys will do a better job this weekend. I know that they'll be prepared to to continue to improve. And sometimes they just got your number, and we just got hit a little bit. But um, you know, I'm still I'm still very confident and happy with our staff, and, and we'll we'll do a better job on the starting end this week. Well, th- this weekend, it- it's going to be interesting. First of all, the weather is going to be absolutely spectacular. Uh, now, uh, I've been told the uh, uh, the temperature is going to be in the upper 70s to near 80 uh, all three days, and the three nights are going to be low mid-60s. So you're going to have unbelievable weather, uh, and you're going to have unbelievable competition as well. Uh, Nichols State uh, will be first in line. You'll play that game at Thibodeau, which is an hour south of Baton Rouge. You'll play Nichols State on Friday afternoon at 1.30 p.m. 
and then make a journey to uh, Baton Rouge to take on one of the premier programs in all of college baseball in the LSU Tigers. That'll be a Friday night game at 8 o'clock hour time, 7 o'clock uh, central time, 8 o'clock hour time. Uh, a Saturday afternoon game, which will begin at 3 o'clock hour time in Baton Rouge against LSU. And then Sunday, you'll conclude the four-game series taking on Nichols State, uh, a mid-major program like Youngstown State. Uh, Nichols State uh, will host the Penguins at Thibodeau Sunday afternoon at 2 p.m. We all know how good LSU is. I believe number 12 in the last uh, uh, updated st- uh, ratings from from Baseball America. Let's talk a little bit about Nichols State. It's a mid-major program, much like Youngstown State. Uh, give us a little scouting report on Nichols State, Skip. Well, they're uh, they, you know we're just kind of into that process right now, going through. But they're really athletic. They're going to be able to put the you know they're going to they're going to move the ball around. Not a whole lot of power. I think they have five, maybe five returning home runs on their roster from last year. So it's not not a ton of power, but they're going to beat you. They're going to beat you with some small ball. They're going to, you know, they're going to do some hitting and running, um, and uh, you know, they're going to play good defense. They, uh, I don't know who the starter is, but I'm assuming um, we kind of got an idea of a couple guys that they may start, um, and uh, we're starting to do some scouting reports. But you know, they're going to. They played a, t- uh, a tough weekend. They had Eastern Illinois down there last weekend. They played. They won game one, like 11 to four, and then they played two tight games on on the last two days. So, um, you know, they're going to be, a, they'll be a good program. It's a beautiful facility. Um, and, uh, you know, they do a nice job with it. So I'm excited to get a chance to, to go down to Louisiana. I've never been there. Um, should be good competition uh, against Nichols. And, and then, um, you know, we'll, we'll focus there and then we'll, we'll be ready for LSU at, at night. Okay. Nichols state, are they in the same uh, conference as Troy or are we talking different conference? No, they're not in the same conference. They, uh, I, I, it's it's eluding me at this moment. Um, they are in. Um, I want to say they're in the. They're in with Houston Baptist, Chattanooga. Uh, okay, they're in. They're okay. I know. I know which which conference. The Southland Conference. They're in the Southland. Yeah, yeah they're right. in the Southland Conference. All right, so. Yeah. Uh, Nickel State, obviously, uh, at Thibodeau, uh, Louisiana. It's an hour south of Baton Rouge, close to the coast, uh, close to the Gulf of Mexico. Um, beautiful, beautiful uh, uh, weather down there for Friday afternoon as well as Sunday afternoon. Uh, and then the middle two games, you guys will be busing uh, from Thibodeau to Baton Rouge, about an hour north, uh, and you'll be taking on LSU. And uh, everyone knows uh, how good LSU is. Everyone knows the the craziness that Tiger Nation brings. Uh, it's it's great for the kids. You get an opportunity to go to one of the one of the nicer facilities in all of college baseball as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Coach Maneri, he's been a, he's a legendary coach. He's won you know pretty much everywhere he's been, whether it's Air Force or Notre Dame, LSU. Um, they'll have a good program. They they. Uh, I actually watched. They played last night. They played the uh, Louisiana Tech last night. It was a crazy game. They won in, in the ninth. They hit a grand slam and a, and a solo shot to win. Um, but you know they they have a they're they're going to be a little different. They're really young. I mean they're really young. They don't have a senior on their on their in their position players. They got one of the top freshmen in the country and Dylan Cruz. He's you know one of the highest rated uh, freshmen in that class. So. Uh, he's he's gonna have to provide some thump. They're they're good on the mound, um, but they haven't. You know, they're not your typical you know power hitting SEC team. They're gonna move the ball around, probably similar to you know a little bit similar to Nichols um, in the fact that they'll play some small ball and they'll move it around. So they're both gonna provide a unique challenge. It'll be it'll be interesting to see how our guys react having to go from one one place to the other. But I think hopefully going from you know even though you have to drive a little bit. Um, well, you know, I'm sure the atmosphere will provide the extra, you know, the extra juice that you need for that for that night game. Uh, they should have, you know, 20, 2,500, I think, 3,000 fans that went into the stadium. It looked like a pretty good crowd last weekend. So, uh, can't ask for better weather at both places. So it should be should provide that extra little motivation um, when you have to go two places. And the reason why we did this is because our second weekend against Mississippi State got 
um, got canceled, and we were kind of scrambling last minute. We were going to play Nichols, and then um, LSU had an opening, and they were able to work it out. So I'm um, just glad that uh, we get to play baseball games in, in beautiful weather. All right, Nichols State 1-2. and two. They dropped 2 out of 3 to Eastern Illinois. LSU, uh, I believe they're 2-1 and because they split the weekend series with Air Force, which is a little surprising. Uh, and I believe they're going to play two more games before they, uh, before they take on Youngstown State. So, uh, it, and, and, again, and again, when you're in the South, uh, you have better weather. You're able to play uh, a lot more games than the schools up north, unfortunately. Well, yeah, I mean, it'll all, it all evens itself out as the course of the year goes on because we're only allowed to play 56 games on the season. So uh, they usually, a lot of these, Southern schools will play a lot more midweeks early in the season to get to get those in. And as SEC play comes around, they'll probably play less and less midweeks just to give your pitchers and your players a little more rest in between weekends. Um, but uh, hey, the more the more games they can play before us, the more guys they got to use on the mound. That's okay for me, um, you know, because uh, just I think playing four games a weekend is difficult. Our guys were. I thought we handled it really well. We obviously played well on Sunday. Uh, that's when championships are made. You got to be able to, you know, championship teams can play well on Sundays, and and um, you know we we did that. But playing four games and, and 36 innings is is taxing on the body. Um, so I'm uh, I know every weekend series this whole year will be a four game series for the most part. So um, you know, just trying to get back in the weight room, get our guys prepared for this weekend. Okay, so one weekend in the books. Uh, uh, there's a, a theory that uh, the, the biggest improvement in football uh, is from game one to game two. Is this, can the same be said for baseball? Uh, the biggest improvement can be from one series to the next series, or does that theory not imply or, or it doesn't work in baseball? Oh, I think, I think it. I mean, I think every game you, you, you get better, you know, from game one to game two to game, you know, and, and and might be more like series because you're playing a team four times, so there's no secrets by the end of the uh, by the end of the weekend. But yeah, I, I think I think you'll see uh, we'll be much more comfortable this weekend. We will uh, we'll be able, we'll we'll be much better even defensively. Um, I would I would expect us to be better, uh, really, in all that. and and. And we we had better at bats. We had better approaches. We you know we had less strikeouts as the weekend went on, and um, you know I just look more comfortable. So I'm ex- I'm expecting that to carry over this week. This is a veteran group. I, like there was even though we had lost the first three games, there was no there was no panic. There was no um, you know there was there was no bad body language. There was none of that. Like the guys were they they, they show up every day. They're prepared and. Um, you know, so hopefully we'll continue to improve um, going into this weekend. Okay, you got a high of 46 degrees today. You got a high of 50 degrees tomorrow. Neither day is supposed to be rain. Are the Penguins on the field? We well, we won't be on Eastwood, but we may get outside. We're going to enter squad today and tomorrow, so we'll probably be mostly in the watch. Um, there's a chance that we might get out and get some fly balls just because we're trying to. You know, there's guys that didn't travel this past weekend, and then there's some guys that didn't uh, um, didn't pitch as much uh, this past weekend that we need to get some work in. We want to get some some reps for our guys just to see live pitching throughout the week. So we're going to enter squad today and a couple innings, and then tomorrow a couple innings, um, and then we might work outside a little bit and get some get some fly balls, work on some communication stuff, some some relays and cuts. Uh, just you know, trying to clean up some of that stuff. But yeah, we're we're fortunate. We finally got some good weather. Hopefully, that the, this is it. This is the break that we need. The the snow will all kind of go away, and and because uh, it's going to be a we'll be at Fort Wayne next weekend. So uh, hopefully, this weather's right here to stick. All right, Dan. Before we let you go, uh, you brought it up. Uh, obviously, uh, with the team going on the road, you're not allowed to have your entire roster with you. You're only allowed a certain amount of kids. Uh, on the road, and we made mention of this a few weeks ago, it, it certainly makes practice that much more competitive because you want, if if you're one of the kids that's on the borderline, you, you got to practice really hard and, and really stick out in order for you to gain an opportunity to go on a road trip. So 
You guys have been back home now. This is the second day back home since coming home on Sunday. Have you noticed a change in the kids that were not on the first weekend uh, roster that some of those kids are are putting forth that and I'm, I don't want to say a better effort because that's that's a horrible thing to say but but do you notice more competition uh, especially amongst the kids that were not on that roster in the first weekend well we were off yesterday so um, the guys just have some optional lifting and some some agility stuff that they do on Monday so we didn't really I haven't really been around the group too much uh, in the last couple of you know, last day, um, especially we didn't get home till I didn't get my home in my bed till about two thirty in the morning on Monday morning. So, um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure you know we don't have we don't have a lot of we didn't have a lot of position players that didn't make the trip. You know, we only have a couple um, for our pitchers. Some of the guys that didn't make it were either injured or um, you know we're, we're quarantined and have to work back just to get you know. When you get quarantined for 14 days, you, you don't and you can't throw. It, it does put it put a, it, it put, puts you in the hole a little bit. You know, you have to work your arm back into shape and get yourself back prepared. So most of the guys that didn't go are kind of in that boat. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm sure today's inner squad will be competitive, uh, especially for the arms um, that they want to get out there and and uh, you know every every pitch is meaningful. Uh, just to continue to get better. I mean the the the, our, our players work every day as hard as they possibly can. They're, they're constantly trying to uh, make improvements, not just for themselves, but for our team to help our team get better. Um, and, uh, you know, so I would expect that, you know, those guys put some work in on the weekend and now they're ready to, to, sh- to kind of, you know, show off, I guess you could say, you know, today. And, and then uh, we'll make some decisions on where we need to go from here. Uh, the Horizon League did open it up, so we'll be able to take 30 guys on the road, I believe. Um, so that helps a lot. You know, that makes decisions a lot easier because we have a couple guys that are injured uh, that are out for the season. So, you know, kind of limits, uh, you know, it shrinks our roster size of guys able to travel a little bit. So, um, you know, hopefully that'll help uh, because we, we, can, we could use everyone, you know, especially when you're playing four-game series. There were guys that I, I didn't think would pitch on Friday night that got in there on Friday and um, and did a great job and really stepped up. So you just see how valuable everyone is um, when uh, you know when when things don't go to plan. Uh, you can use everybody, especially pitching uh, on the weekend. So um, looking forward to to a good inner squad. We got to have a good week of practice. We really have two days just today and tomorrow, and then we'll practice at, at LSU on on Thursday night. But um, you know, every day's got to be competitive. We we're not satisfied. We got to continue to get better, and and um, I'm expecting those guys that, that didn't travel to have a good week. I right, Dan. So it, if I heard you correctly, uh, you'll have 30 players available for this weekend's trip in Louisiana. Not this weekend. No. Oh, okay, uh, for the Horizon, sorry, Horizon Lake. Okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. Uh, you guys will leave on uh, Thursday, uh, fly into Baton Rouge. Are you going to be staying in Baton Rouge, or will you be staying in Thibodeau? We're actually flying into New Orleans, um, and then we're going to stay. It's about halfway between and, and Gonzales, um, Louisiana, so you're about 40 minutes from Nichols and about 30 minutes from LSU, so we're kind of right there, right smack in the middle. All right, so, fantastic. Uh, and, hey, and flying I to New Orleans is a beautiful thing, by the way. That's, uh, oh. I love the airport. And, and, and I, gotta, I guess i got to make mention, I heard uh, – I heard you. Uh, you were you were dogging on the uh, on the on the current day players and the technology. Is that is that a true story? I was dogging on the fact that baseball is played much differently and not in a good way today as compared to forty and fifty years ago. Oh, I would I would agree. I would agree. I'd say the, uh, the players are more talented, but the game is definitely different and i don't think it's going in a positive way i think it's going in a negative way yeah they, the major, they might be the major league level. I, I will say they might be more talented but they don't look more talented because the everyday players strike out way too much uh and the pitchers uh throw uh they don't pitch they throw uh so they might be they might be more talented they don't show their talent well as I'm much as they should that, i'm going to tell you that i watched 
Vanderbilt play Wright State last night, and Vanderbilt's starter was 88 to or 98 to 100. Um, so you know the the guys are talented. There's some super super talented guys out there. The pitching, the reason why there's so many strikeouts is because the pitching is so good now. I mean, everyone's got plus velocity. I mean, both starters in our game on Sunday, uh, for instance. Our, our guy was up to 95, and their guy was up was, was up to 94, um, and that's a Sunday start and a mid-major. That's impressive. Run. So, so you know, there's there's some serious velocity out there, and that that makes it a much more challenging to, uh, to to hit when you're facing you know plus velocity at 98 to 100 miles an hour, um, you know, on a, on a daily basis. So, no, I, I get uh, that. Now, if it's straight, it's you know, it's not as big I don't of a care, challenge. 100. Hundred no, hundred miles an hour straight or hundred, you know, if you can throw a hundred miles an hour and make it run, then you might as well you just you just go up there and put your bat down and <laughs> watch the pitch go by because you're not getting you got to yeah. guess and swing in a zone. Because yeah, not, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's if you're it, and I believe it was um, uh, who was it um, Rajay Davis uh, who who yeah, said yeah. I had to I had to see I had to make sure that okay he's going to throw a slider. Now I have to guess where this pitch is, and I'm going to swing in this zone, and then we'll see what happens. Then that's where scouting comes into play. But if a guy throws 100 mile an hour and it's straight as a string, he's going to get lit up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, probably. But I don't know. I'd take a guy throwing 100 miles an hour straight than a guy throwing 84 with some movement. No, I, 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 I would... yeah, I'll, I'll go <laughs> along with that. I'll go along with that. But, but again, I mean, if a – in in today's game, okay, you, if you have a strikeout pitch, that's wonderful, but you also have to have another two-plus pitches in order to be really, really good. I, I'm not saying that they're not talented. It's just the game is played in a different way, and it's not a, it's not a good different way. It's, you're not playing the game the way the game is supposed to be played uh, on, on some occasions, which bothers the hell out of me. But then again, I'm a curmudgeon that way, so, you know. Yeah, I, I get it. I mean, uh, you know, but that's, uh, I mean, part of it is they, they pay people to do that stuff. I get if it. They pay people. If they pay people to hit 325 and and be on base a lot, then that people would do that. But they pay people to hit home runs. They don't care how many strikeouts you have. They pay you to drive in runners and hit home runs. If you can do that, you get paid. I get no it. Matter how, no matter how many times you strike out. Because if you look at Major League Baseball, the run production is actually down. Now, the home runs are way up and run production is down because home runs don't necessarily equate to runs. No, exactly, like especially if, Yeah, especially if you have a solo home run. It it doesn't yeah. it doesn't equate to many runs, so Sometimes home runs reset the pitcher. Exactly. You, know, you get, you get a, you, the bases are clear, they can go back and relax. When there's guys on base a lot of times play pitchers are a lot more uncomfortable throwing when there's runners on base and there are when there's nobody on i'd rather listen i'd rather i'd rather face a pitcher who has already been rattled and has to pitch from the stretch than a guy that just gave up a home run and now he's reset himself and now he gets to pitch from the wind up all the pressure's off because the home run was given up so now he gets a chance to reset himself give me that guy that's going to be crapping in his drawers while pitching from the stretch uh, you know, and and not and not have that opportunity to have a reset, where I can have a bigger inning. Yeah, absolutely. I, I would. I mean, you know, if, if it's a three-run homer, then I'll take a three-run homer. But, well, I, I get. I'll give you that. I'll, I'll give you <laughs> yeah. that. I'll, I'll, I'll give you that. Okay. This will be fun. And and I'm glad you brought up Wright State uh, taking on Vanderbilt. Uh, somebody told me down in uh, the Nashville area this morning, Vanderbilt looks more like a minor league baseball team where a lot of kids are like double-A material, and I, I kind of shook my head wondering how, how legit that is. But Wright State taking on Vanderbilt, it, it, a lot of teams in our conference, they're really having fun taking, a, uh, taking on the, the Power Five conference teams out of the SEC and the ACC and, uh, and, and some of the warmer climate schools. Yeah, we do a great job. We, we, our conference challenges itself, and I bet we have a above-average record against Power five slash top thirty programs in the country. Um, I think UIC is their next series is against Vanderbilt. So um, you know we don't our conference doesn't shy away from many um, 
Power Five team. And, uh, you know, I think I watched that game last night. Vanderbilt, Vanderbilt their, their, their two starting pitchers are about as good as you can get. I don't know. They, they could be in the major league. They could be in a major league rotation right now. I mean, they're that, they're that good. Kamar Rocker and, and Lighter. Um, I mean, those guys are 98 mile an hour. They can move it and spin it and, and have plus command. And they're going to be top, you know, probably top five overall pick. I mean, that's how good they are. Um, so, you know, I saw that tweet and I saw some people uh, down downplaying it. But with those two guys on the mound, they could, they could, they could give a lot of people, no matter who you are, fit. I'm not saying that they can't be beat, but they, they can, they're going to give people a lot of trouble, especially in the SEC. Well, there's a reason why they're a top five team. I mean, that's uh, their two starters alone give them a give them a really uh, a really nice advantage. There's no question about that. Uh, yeah. You'll you'll see some uh, some really good pitching uh, as well down uh, in Nichols State and and Baton Rouge, and the pitching has certainly improved exponentially over the last 10 years you got guys now that 10 years ago you're if you threw 90 you were considered to be above average 10 years ago 90 is now actually below average uh for a pitcher now you got to throw mid 90s to get someone's attention well yeah yeah i mean most of our guys throw in the in the low 90s or you know can touch 90 so um and I'd say that's the, the same for most Division One programs in the country. A lot of the guys on the roster are throwing 90 plus miles an hour. So um, I know in high school, like if you could touch 90, you were getting drafted. Now there's guys throwing 93, 94 that have to go to college because they don't, they're not getting drafted. You know, because you can't throw a secondary pitch or you can't throw enough strikes. Before it was just, hey, this guy throws hard. You know, 90. Not, I think the major league average on fastballs is now like 94.2. So, um, you know, you gotta have you gotta have some plus velocity to be able to be able to throw ninety four, ninety five miles an hour consistently. Yeah, no question. Uh, Dan, always a pleasure. Look forward to to, uh, to seeing the results of this weekend, and 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 looking forward to uh, seeing what you guys do uh, with LSU on on Friday night and Saturday. Yeah, we're looking looking forward to it. I'm excited to get back on the road and get after it. And. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll soak up the uh, beautiful weather here we're having in Youngstown for a couple of days. Well, you're going to get a, a far better weather down there. And, and let me just okay. let me just throw this out here because I know that you're you're a food connoisseur like I am. Gumbo. I'm in. Gumbo sausage sausage gumbo. You will absolutely love it. You've been you spend a lot of time in Louisiana. Uh, I uh, I spent some time in New Orleans. Uh, spent a few uh, spent a few weeks in New Orleans. Yeah, let's just say the uh, the the wallet uh, paid for it, but it was uh, it was a, uh, a a very well fun trip. Oh, trips, okay. I, I have to say trips because no, I've been to this city three times. I'll give you a food I'll give you a food review when I get back next week when we talk. All uh, right. Well, what did you uh, what did you think of the uh, Southern cuisine in Alabama? Oh, that's good. Yeah, we had. Uh, I mean, it, it's not too 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 different dissimilar to what we got up here but yeah it was, uh, it was good yeah food was good everything was good but we're looking forward to i'm looking forward to some i like some spicy food so i'm looking forward to, to what they got in store down there. oh yeah if you you go to a couple of places you'll uh you'll get some nuclear uh, gumbo which yeah i don't i don't touch that stuff anymore but yeah it's uh, sausage gumbo yeah it's that's it that is a must-have down there well i'm looking forward to it all right brother always a pleasure all right. See you. I'll talk to you soon. Yep. Dan Bertolini, he is the manager of the Youngstown State University baseball program. And uh, the Penguins will be playing two games in Thibodeau against Nichols State out of the Southland Conference and then two games against LSU, which I believe they were in the um, what, what, number 12. I think they were number 12 going into um, – going into uh, – uh, this week they're number 12 in the country by the way Vanderbilt is number four Mississippi number one Virginia number two the U is number three Vanderbilt is four Louisville is five Arkansas is six Florida seven Mississippi State eight Florida State nine uh, Texas Christian University is 10 so if you're looking in the top 10 
Uh, SEC schools, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, five of the ten uh, were SEC schools, and uh, I believe the other five were, um, well, four of them were out of the S- uh, ACC. Virginia, Miami, Louisville, and Florida State uh, out of the ACC. Uh, Mississippi, Vanderbilt, Arkansas, Florida, and Mississippi State out of the SEC, and TCU out of the Big 12. So those are the 10 teams in the top 10. Five SEC schools, four ACC schools, and one school out of the uh, the Big 12 are uh, the top 10 teams in the latest Baseball America Top 25 uh, college baseball poll. So there you go. All right, 330-886-0813, the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline open for business. Yeah, that's, uh, I caught some of Vanderbilt last night. Good God, can those kids pitch. <laughs> Un- wow, unbelievable. Uh, we'll take a timeout, be back with more. It is a Tuesday edition of Running Point on YSNlive.com. No matter what the weather, be prepared with a reliable, efficient, rude gas furnace or air conditioner from MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. Call your energy efficient expert, MP Vivo, today for a free estimate. Here at MP Vivo, we rely on rude, and so should you. Myers Family Insurance knows the importance of a great team. Our team continues to grow to help you with your Medicare and retirement needs. The annual election period is October 15th through December 7th. Now's the time to make sure your plan continues to meet your needs for the upcoming year. Call today. High risk future cash shows steady snow for the next few hours. Still just downright cold. It is bitter out there. Several strong bands of lake effect snow. When is kind of the big story today as well. So if you need a more detailed winter forecast on WFMJ.com and the Storm Tracker 21 app. I went to Greenwood Chevrolet because I was really interested in looking at the tracks. Because I wanted my dream truck. Because I've been going there for 20 years. I'm really happy that I went to Greenwood Chevrolet. Because they really went the extra mile for me. Now we're going the extra mile for you, only at Greenwood Chevrolet. Welcome back to a Tuesday edition of Running Points presented by Greenwood Chevrolet on Mahoning Avenue in Austin Town. Let's get to the phone lines at 330 886 0813. Before we do, Tiger Woods, news just reporting, Tiger Woods was involved in an automobile accident uh, this morning. His truck rolled over. Uh, He has been taken to the hospital. Uh, No word on uh, Tiger Woods' condition, but he was involved in an accident today in which his car or truck rolled over. Uh, He has been uh, taken to a local hospital. Uh, We'll hopefully get some word on how the um, one of the greats is doing. Again, Tiger Woods involved in an automobile accident this morning. All right, Emmanuel, you're on the MP Vivo heating and air conditioning hotline. What's going on, Emmanuel? Well, I'm not going to comment on that until <clears throat> I get some more information. Yeah, exactly. But a, little, <laughs> a little bit of inside baseball, and I, I know the skipper's listening. Um, um, our daughters know each other, and um, my daughter turns four, one of them turns 14 today. Today's her birthday. Oh, well, happy I, birthday. <laughs> I can't believe it was the day after Ron Burr's birthday, but hey, it is what it is. <laughs> right? <laughs> All right. I, I got a couple questions that I wanted to ask yeah. you. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people want to want want to ask you this question, too. Now, the team that's going to be playing at Eastwood Field, are, are they going to be called the Scrappers? Yes. Okay. I, yeah. did, I, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. They're, they're the Scrappers. They, just because you've uh, – You've changed an affiliation doesn't mean that you change the uh, the nickname. 
They're still the scrappers. Okay, and um, and far as YSU baseball, are, are we going to be allowed to uh, watch them in person? Uh, yes. Uh, as of right now, up to 900 fans will be permitted in the ballpark uh, when Eastwood Field opens its gates uh, for high school and YSU baseball games. And, and you know, I don't know if he was following – or I guess you're going to talk to their coach. They're not too happy down there. They lost their – LSU lost their last game they played. They're, they're mad. Well, they, they split with Air Force. They won last night. Uh, they're they're 2-1 oh, on no, the so campaign. Oh, yeah. yeah, but they lost to Air Force, and that got the Cajuns a little riled up down there because they're not used yeah. to losing to uh, <laughs> to teams that don't normally have a good baseball team. Yeah, So, uh, but then again, too, like like you said yesterday, if, you're gonna, if you want to catch a team, you got to catch them early. Yeah, exactly. You know, because once once they get everything, every, they dot the I's across the T's, they're going to be hard to beat. So I think YSU has a shot down there to win at least one of them down there. I'm well, you would sure. you would think. Uh, now you'll you'll be seeing uh, um, Nickel State on Friday afternoon and Sunday afternoon, uh, and then the Penguins will play uh, LSU on Friday night and Saturday afternoon, and uh, they'll be staying in between uh, Thibodeau and Baton Rouge in the town of Gonzales, which is uh, I want to say a about an hour from New Orleans, where they uh, where they fly down to. And, and I was listening to you when you when you first came on, and you were talking about the Seattle's uh, general manager. Yeah, his the president and GM was uh, resigned, yeah. uh, basically giving away some uh, giving away some knowledge that uh, that management did not particularly want to uh, to uh, have given away. Well, well, not only that. You explained it better because, see, I've been following this story, right? And, uh, and, 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 and I, I had no idea the angle that you had. I, I thought it was something because he was complaining about he didn't want to uh, pay the interpreter, you know, because he made a comment that when he threatened to stop paying the uh, interpreter, that his English all of a sudden got better. Well, yeah. But, yeah. It, it, but it was about what, what you said. But my question to you is this. Didn't the Major League Baseball Association agree to these terms or what? Well, I, I think that Major League Baseball, the Players Association, uh, yeah. they, they would love to have uh, their, you know, their kids shown in the best light possible. And, and, and it's no secret uh, that there are a number of kids uh, playing baseball, whether it be in the minor leagues or in the major leagues, uh, that were not born in the States. Uh, there's players that, uh, that were born in the island of Puerto Rico. Uh, you got kids that were uh, from uh, Latin and Central America. You got some Colombians. You have some Venezuelans. You have some uh, Nicaraguans, uh, Panamanians. Uh, you get Koreans. Mexicans, and, and then <laughs> yeah. you go over to the eastern parts of the of the of the world uh, in the mm. Far East, in Japan, Taipei, Taiwan, mm. Korea. Uh, folks that have uh, left communist China. Uh, you know, folks that have left communist Cuba uh, into uh, in 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 Central America. So there's kids that that are playing in minor, minor league baseball, and there's guys playing in major league baseball that don't speak English, and they don't speak English very well, and their English is is bad enough that they need a translator. Uh, and yeah, I think Major League Baseball should have a opportunity in spring training, and 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 to, I'll take it even a step further. When you're getting these kids from the Dominican and these baseball academies that are that are all over the place, whether it be in the Dominican Republic, in uh, in Venezuela, uh, in Cuba, not in Cuba, in uh, in Puerto Rico, those academies should also be teaching these kids English. Yeah, you, well, you Ron, teach that, these kids the language. That's that's really not, I understand you telling me this, but that's not really the question that I was asking you. Now, you 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 keep a player, you don't bring them up to a, to a, to a roster so you can get another extra year. Oh yeah, of the, the, the way you explained it, right? Yes. How how did the players association agree with that? They didn't. They, they, it's it's well, it's you you have to have uh, you have to have six years. Of 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 Major League Baseball in order to be a free agent, so there yeah. is a there is a cut line in in the year. There's a cut line involved, and it's I believe it's it, in early May is the cut line where uh, once you get uh, once you get a certain amount of games in, 
you can no longer sit back and say this is a full year. And the cut line is in early May. I believe it's somewhere around May the 10th in a normal baseball season. So in Chris Bryant's case, and they, and they cannot the, – the, the Players Association cannot prove that this happened. They can't prove it because you can't – you can't tell a general manager, oh, by the way, you have to have this guy up uh, in, in, in opening day. You have to have him up. If he did if he did really, really well in spring training, you must have him up on opening day. You can't do that. You're not allowed to tell a general manager or anyone in baseball when a kid uh, can be called up. So knowing that, the Cubs management said we're purposely going to per- uh, they're purposely going to put Chris Bryant who was good enough to play on opening day there was no question he was good enough to be playing in a Cubs uniform on opening day they purposely held him back to the day after this cutoff date and said okay now you can play with us so they can have an extra year for Chris Bryant so instead of being a free agent at the end of the 2020 season and I think it was 2014 when this happened because it would have been 14 15 16 17 18 19 yeah it was 2014 when Chris Bryant was called up one day after the deadline so instead of him being a free agent at the end of 2020 He's now a free agent at the end of 2021, and the Cubs basically got another year out of Chris Bryant thanks to this move. I think, just my personal opinion, that the next contract, I think uh, that that might might be discussed. Well, it's going to be discussed. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any two ways about it. It's definitely going to be discussed. And I'll tell you what else is going to be discussed: uh, a salary, uh, a, a a salary cap by the owners uh, to the players. And the players are going to laugh them out of the room because that's not going to happen. Now, here's what I would do. And, and again, I see both points, so this is where I think this would work. If I were the owners, I would sit back and tell the players, look, we understand you are not a favor. You're not, you're not a big fan of salary caps. We get it. We understand it. How about a salary floor? Instead of a ceiling, we're going to go with floor. Now, this is going to benefit everyone because now if you sit back and say you as an owner must spend minimum X amount of dollars and make the minimum $80 million. So teams like the Pirates and the Indians who currently have a, currently have a payroll below $40 million, they would have to up their ante and they would have to say, okay, in order for you to be with Major League Baseball, you have to have a minimum salary cap of minimum eighty million dollar payroll for you to compete. The NFL has one, right? The NFL has a minimum and a maximum. Okay, uh, so you don't have a maximum salary. You'll never agree to it. The players will never agree to it. But you get the owners to say, "We will give you a minimum salary base, which will it greatly improve the money in the game." In exchange, the player gets an extra year under contract with the original team. So instead of that player going to free agency after six years, it will now be after seven years. Okay. That, that's what well, I would do. If I were an owner, that's how I would approach this. Because you're never going to agree to a salary cap but I would sit back and say, I'll give you a salary floor. I'll give you the, I'll give you the minimum floor where now the, the, the owners that are allegedly cheap are going to have to spend $80 million. And in exchange, we're going to need players for small market teams to have one extra year. Uh, so instead of six years, now it's seven years. That might be the problem, you know. They might argue with the definition of a small market team. Well, there's plenty of small market teams. Those are the teams that can't afford the two hundred million dollar payroll that the Dodgers are throwing out because they don't have the near the money the of the local contract that the Yankees, the Dodgers, the Red Sox, the Cubs, yeah. and and some of those yeah. other uh, larger teams that their their television contract is so much better than the. Contracts well, would, of, you, would you consider the Atlanta Braves a small market? 
Um, they weren't when you had baseball played on the Superstation every night, but now that's gone. So, you know, they have their own cable network, uh, but it's not nationwide like like it was when the when the Braves were in the Superstation. Okay, well, as always, but Ronnie, man, I don't know if I should pat you on your back or feel sorry for you because all of us, you, all of us, listen to what you say. And and, and 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 you can't and, and you always have to be on it and you've always been on it and I appreciate that but <laughs> you know but whatever like when I heard the coach say he heard you say this you are the man Ronnie well, my and, God listen it's, it's hey, a pleasure knowing you hey, <laughs> hey listen I, I got no listen I got no problems backing up with what I said and I, I uh, what I said was baseball is not as good as it was in the '60s and I say that because while the players might be more talented they're not showing it. They're, well, they're, you know, we, in, in, you know in, what's sad, Ronnie? What's that? The, the, the best bunt that I've seen lately was Gronk using the Super Bowl trophy laying down a bunt. He put a, he put a dent in it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> that true. was a perfect bunt. Yeah, that <laughs> was. <laughs> yeah, that definitely was. <laughs> okay, my brother, you have a nice day. Right, man. <laughs> See you. 330-886-0813. We'll be back to wrap this one up. Stick around. WRS Wealth Advisors is the area's premier wealth and retirement specialist. With our combined 70 years experience and comprehensive wealth strategy, we assist our clients attain their goals. Call 330-965-0370 to learn more about our individual and corporate financial planning services or visit wrswealthadvisors.com. Good luck, athletes. Hi everyone, this is DJ Yokely with Your Sports Network. We appreciate your support of YSN and welcome you to the YSN family. Our broadcast streams are brought to you live at no cost to you by sponsors that are local to this community. Without the vision and generosity of our sponsors and partners, we would not be able to bring this game to you today. So please support the great businesses and leaders that are making this game possible. And if you're a business in need of great advertising and sponsorship opportunities, feel free to head over to our site for more information on the right fit for you. We are local, we are loyal, and we are live. We are YSN. Ah, the details. Baird Brothers Fine Hardwoods is one fine ride. Perfect cornering, superb handling, sporty and stylish, power to spare, plus awesome mileage. Yeah, jaw-droppingly beautiful lines and well-appointed with luxurious trim. Put more oomph in your life and start beholding the molding. Find your home's fine hardwood at BairdBrothers.com. For heating, cooling, and indoor air quality, the Mahoney Valley trusts MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning, offering worry-free repair, service, and installation. Call MP Vivo today for a free estimate. MP Vivo Heating and Air Conditioning. We're your energy-efficient experts. Welcome back as we close up shop on this Tuesday edition of Running Point. Here are the games on the network tonight uh, in uh, tournament action, boys tournament action. Niles is at Struthers, Lordstown at Brookfield, Middlefield Cardinal at Camel, Ravenna at Canfield, Rootstown visits champion, West Yaga is at Cheney, United at Crestview, Western Reserve at Jackson Milton, Howland will visit Lakeview. Notre Dame Cathedral Latin is at Louisville. Bloomfield at McDonald. Columbiana at Mineral Ridge. East Palestine is at Newton Falls. Gerard is at Salem. Conneaut at South Range. Maplewood at Valley Christian. Hubbard at West Branch. And Badger will visit Wellsville. All of those games start at 7 o'clock, and they are all on the network tonight. Nine ninety nine will get you access to all of those games dj and the fellas with power hour coming up next it's been a pleasure we'll talk tomorrow noon to three running points 